Well, hello there and welcome to day one of Indian Wells on Talking Tennis. And I am very, very excited because um, not only can I play with the screen, but I can also be commentating alongside my good friend, Shahiri Ravi. Shahiri, the hero of Dubai. How are you doing? Well, uh, I'm pretty flattered by that introduction, Nick. I'm doing pretty well, thanks. Uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to be on um, calling a match or two with you, uh, you know, my fellow co-host of the Popcorn Tennis Podcast. Um, you know, just like old okay? times. Yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> question, yeah. I mean, I do have plans for uh, rebooting the show um, at some point this summer. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's far from done. So, uh, yeah, as uh, as opposed to obviously what I had said earlier, in the, uh, you know, the year but we don't need to get into that right now so yeah well we uh, look everyone loves a good reboot um that's all i can say um at least hollywood does and we're not far from hollywood to be fair in uh indian wells and we've got plenty of matches coming up for you so we'll be keeping you across everything is happening in the mira andreva versus casey voynet's match um however we need to wait for tansi kokonakis and marcos Chiron uh to finish their match first um they are currently um, engaged in a real battle. Kokinakis leads 6-3, um, 4-5. Um, uh, Chiron is actually two points away from taking it to a decider uh, to break the Kokinakis serve. So worth keeping an eye on the score there. Um, few results to bring you. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick results round up and then we'll, we'll kind of talk tennis. Um, so first winner of Indian Wells, um, match win it was Marie Bushkova, who crushed Sara Cerebos Tormo, 6-1, 6-1. Um, we, she was then shortly followed by um, Shramkova, um, who beat uh, Wang Yifan. So this is Rebecca Shramkova, the qualifier um, from, uh, I think it's Slovenia, it might be Slovakia, uh, who beat Wang Yifan, 6-4, 6 love. And on the main stadium courts, um, Angelique Kerber has just beaten Petra Martic, 6-3, 6, three, six four, in one in probably the most convincing performance she's had since the, she came back this year. Um, and that means that we're now waiting for the other match we're paying attention to, which is Chris Eubanks against Brandon Nakashima, who will be following them out um, on this court um, shortly after Indian Wells is currently packed. Bit of a quick live score update around the ground as well. Um, Chris O'Connell and Jack Draper are locked at a set all. O'Connell's just taken the second set, um, 6-3. Draper took the first, 6-1. Shevchenko is about to, has got a set point against Dominic Kopfer to take a set lead. Um, Tatiana Maria has won the first set against Arantha Roos on tie break, but Roos is up on a break in the second. And it's 4 on the first set between Yannick Hanfman and Pedro Kachin. And you are all officially up to date with everything in Indian Wales. So, yeah, Shrihari, talk to me. Which match are you going to be playing uh, close attention to um, on this stream, but also maybe today as well? Uh, yeah, before that, I don't, I don't think we mentioned this, but um, the 2021 champion, Paula Badosa, has just withdrawn a few minutes. Oh, no. So, yeah. Uh, she, she just seemingly cannot catch a break with these injuries. She only seems to be able to play mixed doubles with Sitsipas. Yeah. I mean, she looked fine there, but she's just withdrawn around 20 minutes or so ago. Uh, that's the latest big update uh, so far for the day. Um, in terms of which match I'm looking most forward to, I mean, does I, I think Andy Murray's playing today? I guess David yeah, he's Goffin. playing David Goffin today. Yeah, so that I would say that's the match that I'm looking most forward to. Uh, and on the women's side, I, I didn't particularly see any match that caught my eye okay and and Dreva and collins of course um and yeah, than... oh erica and Dreva. all oh, right wrong and <laughs> wrong my bad uh regardless um yeah i mean erica's still good but she's obviously not made as big right, an impact right. yeah that, that's what i stuff. thought i mean i looked at the schedule and there wasn't really a match that i thought okay we'll we'll have to watch this or we'll have to keep our eyes out for this one uh today that is but yeah i don't see any match so far that uh, you know could be a um you know potential popcorn clash but yeah he's saying likewise with the, on the men's side i mean i see murray and goffin i mean the matches for you know for the old times uh two veterans going at it uh you know i obviously 
we're aware of the fact that Andy Murray is going to call it quits soon enough. Um, uh, he doesn't plan on playing tennis beyond the summer. David Goffa, I mean, he's had a share of injuries and he's not getting any younger either. So we'll have to see, uh, you know, what's in store for him. And yeah, that, that would be a pretty interesting match considering how both players are desperate for wins um, at this point. Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, Goffan's dropped a fair bit down the rankings. Um, it's fair to say that um, his heyday is a bit behind him. Obviously, he's now into his uh, early 30s, which is crazy to think. Um, as someone who made a bit of a splash on the tours, obviously made the, the ATP finals once in his career, um, made the most of his presence there. Um, and uh, he, uh, and I think obviously he and Murray have some history, particularly with that Davis Cup final from 2015. Yeah. Um, where Murray got GB the win over Belgium. Great to see so many people here, by the way. Hope hope you're all looking forward to us uh, bring, uh, bringing our sort of thoughts, our commentary. We're going to be sitting here. We're going to be talking tennis. It's not just going to be me and Shrihiri. We're going to have Damien joining us shortly um, as well. Um, and we're also going to have um, Jerome coming in. So it's going to be a bit of a tennis party here on day one of Indian Wells. Think of it as like a, a, watch, a live watch party you can go on. But... Um, Although we'll be kind of giving our thoughts and commentary as well, please, please, please share your thoughts. Commentate along with us. Um, yeah, we're here to talk tennis. Welcome and appreciate it. We're here to talk tennis, and we expect to hear back from you as well. And I know that you've all got your thoughts on everything tennis. Everything that's going to happen in Dean Well. This is one of the big events of the year. Um, okay, we'll talk about right now anyway. So. Um, obviously, we've advertised that we're going to be following along uh, Chris Eubanks against Brandon Nakashima, which we're currently waiting for to come out on court, and Mira Andreva and Katie Voyets. Um, which of those matches are you going to be keeping more of an eye on Shrihiri, or are you going to be keeping on an eye maybe on a different match that's going to be uh, getting underway? Um, well, there was obviously O'Connell and Draper, which is interesting now because they once at all and O'Connell uh, just had love 40 on Draper's serve, 15-40 now. Uh, Kokinak is about to serve for the match. Oh, yeah, yeah that was um, a twist. <laughs> Given him was a good, yeah. he was two points away from going to a third set against Jerome. Yeah, and now he's serving for it. Um, interesting because a lot of people had, I think, quite a few people had Draper upsetting Zverev in the second round. He had a good run, Nakapulko yeah. had to retire, unfortunately. But that's something I mentioned about Jack Draper. Um, on uh his draper drooping it seems like it um are you, are you watching yeah, the match right now uh no i actually have to you know turn on a stream because i'm just <laughs> i just got i just got ready with uh, with this uh watch along i don't even have a match with me but yeah the thing with uh draper is that i i still do feel that i need to see more before i get big on him um and yeah, I, okay, he's pegged it back to Deuce now, which is good. But yeah, I, I just I don't see anything that stands out in this game compared to uh, his contemporaries. Uh, a lot of people do think, okay, well, um, you know, he has a bright future. Um, obviously, a lot of people uh, on the channel high on British tennis and their prospects. So that's there, of course. But um, I also do think that he's quite fragile uh, in you know in terms of his body, uh, which if that's the first step for him, I feel uh, if he can stay healthy, of course, you know the results are going to come. It'll be interesting to see him, uh, you know, as maybe a top thirty, top twenty uh, player, you know, potentially seated at slams. But yeah, that was a bit on Jack Draper, um, and then of course. Uh, Nakashima and Eubanks is going to be interesting, I think. Um, I, the, the, the one memory I have of Eubanks is, I think you can recall it too, is I think it was a couple of years ago against Cressy, there was a shanked serve that was an ace, if you remember that. When From was that? Max I don't think I saw it. I might, maybe, no, I think I did see. I've seen a clip of it. I yeah, that was, that was at Indian Wells uh, two years ago against Eubanks. Uh, for, oh, yeah, yeah the, the nice story about Eubanks was that Around around this time last year, he was um, doing some commentary. Um, you know, it was 27, 26, 27 at the time. Thought, okay, he could just pursue commentary instead of tennis. And then he played in Miami, made the quarterfinals, and then, of course, made the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. 
uh, and cracked the, I want to say top 30. Yeah. He, yeah, I think, he cracked, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's kind of gone off the grid since. So this would be interesting to see, um, you know, what he can do here. And as Vanch pointed out, uh, earlier today, or I should say yesterday in Indian Wells time, um, he mentioned that these conditions could be, or or was it was it on this channel or was it for tennis one? I'm not really sure, but he I mentioned mean, that for Eubanks, um, since, I mean, obviously Nakashima is not the strongest returner and, you know, Eubanks is a pretty big serve. Uh, you know, the way the ball bounces up after the serve and it, the way it's aided big servers in the past, it should help Eubanks in this particular matchup. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we can put it on together. You know, I think it's uh, since the U.S. Open first, not the U.S. Open. I mean, he did play. I think he played in uh, what was it, Dallas? But yeah, I mean, a big event in the United States for the first time since the U.S. Open. So should be uh, pretty big for him. Um, and also, yes, quite a few points to defend on the horizon. Uh, he'll want to pick up some form here. Yeah, because it's not, it's not pretty soon actually, because he's got some points from Miami, right? I mean, obviously, yeah, the uh, quarterfinals, but... it's 180 points. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, um, and that... yeah, o O'Connell and Draper are just logging it on the opening game of um, the final set. O'Connell's Con... had four break points, Draper's closed it out on court two against oh, yeah. Sharon. So, yeah, we'll have Mira and Draper on court soon. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's, Kokinakis is playing Sinner next. Oh, that could be interesting, that one. Yeah. Interesting, like, because, yeah, the last time they played, I believe, was Cincinnati 22. Yeah, I think. That was, yeah. And Sinner won in a deciding set tiebreaker. Much, much different Sinner today, of course. But uh, just something uh, worth noting. Um, but yeah, going back to the women's uh, section, um, well, it looks like we already have a winner. Yeah, we got a few win. We got a few winners already. Um, oh, I so think Katie Bolter, uh, the winner in San Diego, will be playing uh, Camilla Giorgi. That could be interesting. Uh, that have they played the one that I picked out as one that would um, that, that that I would we would want to watch. I think obviously Georgie right. being last one thousand champion as well. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it was that. it was uh, was it when, when was it Cincinnati, no, not Canada, Cincinnati. Canada 21, right? Yeah, Canada 21 beat um, Pushkiva somewhat unexpectedly, right. uh, right, in that right. final. Yeah, I, I know it was not 22 because Halep won Canada and Garcia won Cincy, so I was confused. So, yeah, it had to be 21. Um, anyway. Um, uh, so, so yeah, we've got a few. We've got a few things keeping on. So we, we're keeping an eye on a few, uh, a few different things uh, here. Uh, great to see so many of you here, by the way. Um, so yeah, we have more than hundred people viewing this. It's pretty great. Uh, more the merrier soon, of course. Uh, with uh, oh, I, I see that Pedro Cachin was serving for the first set. He got broken back, so it's back to five all between him and Yannick Hampton. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on across. We'll keep it across um, all the scores until the matches that we're kind of uh, interested in are coming out. Although I believe Eubanks and Nakashima are warming up, so maybe we should be uh, moving over to that whilst we wait for Andreva to come on court. So I'm going to turn on uh, that stream. Yeah, and keep an eye on that. Well. Um, I'm also going to try. I'm just trying to find uh, if I give us get some kind of uh, score up. Um, let's go with. Uh, just get bear with me one moment because I'm gonna. Um, I am trying to sort of uh, multitask a little bit here, but we are we're, we're all good. Um, so uh, yeah, we got yeah Eubanks Nakashima on court. I mean, talk to me about Nakashima a little bit, Shahiri, because um, he's he obviously made a bit of a splash winning the next gen in 22, mm -hmm. and obviously every next win of the next gen before him had gone on to make a, a decent splash, um, only for um things to kind of go a bit wrong i think he got injured but um yeah is he he doesn't seem to be quite living up to the hype and to be fair i don't think he was even before he won the next gen that was a bit of a surprise for me 
Right. Uh, if you recall, I think he made the fourth round in Wimbledon, losing Did, to Curios yeah. in five sets. Uh, then, <laughs> yeah, he won the next. He won San Diego before that, which I'm pretty sure I I can sense a glee on Munch's face. <laughs> Just uh, anyway, uh, I, I think that's also his hometown, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nakashima's. Uh, he did win San Diego, um, and he won the next gen finals. And he, I think there were some injuries. Uh, the one match I remember was when he played Holger Rune in Shanghai last year, mm-hmm. and he won 0 in two. Was it Nakashima? Uh, possibly, I think so. Yeah, L- let me just confirm that. That was that's the last uh, memory. Yeah, there was. Um, yeah. He he beat him six love six two in Shanghai, and it's worth noting that Runa was going through a pretty weird phase. Then he was struggling to even win a match since Wimbledon until Basel, I think. He put together a pretty good run in Basel and then in Bercy and Turin. But until then, he was not dealing with some injury, and then he eventually took some time off. He came back, and it was it was a mess. Um, he was losing early everywhere. Um, so yeah, that, that being said, then that's the last memory that I have of uh, Nakashima. Uh, he's, he never really got going after winning the next gen finals. And like you mentioned, oh, there we have the sheriff with us. Maybe. Nakashima was already yeah. mech there, oh. during the next gen finals, by the way. <laughs> what, what was that? I, I said that Nakashima was already mech during, during the next gen finals. But, right. um, you know, he's done some great work since October. Um, basically, on the Challenger Tour, he was only losing to, like, well, mm. more talented players. <laughs> Guys who made right. Grand Slam finals <laughs> in junior. And, I like how he's so blunt. It's like because, more yeah, I mean, he, he lost to Arthur Kazo. He lost to Jack Draper. He lost to Jakub Menchik. Uh, oh, you, twice. You, you think Draper is more talented than Nakashima? That's oh, Jesus. I mean, considerably more talented. I mean, come on. I, I, oof, Jesus, it's not even close. Brandon, I think, is going to have a very nice season. He's going to return to like 50, 60 in the world, and that's going to be Brandon Nakashima. Like, you know, unspectacular, but solid. But yeah, at the challenger level, he was kind of overwhelming to all of these guys who, um, yeah, just didn't have that sort of talent to, let's say, fight back. But yeah, when he played Kazo, Draper, Menchi, Leandro Ridi, even Martin Landalusa should have beaten him, honestly. It was rough. And, um, well, I, I am still pretty hopeful for a win today because, well, mm-hmm. Chris Eubanks is going the other way <laughs> this year. Yeah, and, uh, I was actually yeah. mentioning that to Nick. Um, he's, I mean, he's sort of gone off the map since that Wimbledon run. Uh, I don't remember any run that he put together. He played Shelton, was it in Cincy? The, there's no run that he put together to remember. No. So yeah, like, there wasn't. No, no. I don't. Even, I don't even know if he won consecutive matches since. Uh, I doubt it. I, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, he literally is. His ranking is literally based on Miami, Wimbledon, and Mallorca. All of these mm. results are going to be dropping in you know, the next three, four months. There's a very real chance for Chris Eubanks to fall out of the top 100 this year. Yeah, yeah. I actually was mentioning that to Nick. I obviously forgotten about the title run he had in Mallorca. Uh, but yeah, I did mention. I mean, up coming up soon is. Uh, Miami, where he's defending 180 yeah. points. Then, of course, is uh, Mallorca after, and then the Wimbledon quarterfinal points as well. It's quite a bit uh, that he has to defend there. And again, yeah, he doesn't seem like that week in, week out type of player. Uh, so. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, even the yeah. Mallorca, Wimbledon, Miami rounds, they were all based on like some very tight battles early on, you know, that somehow made it possible. I'm not saying it can't happen again. But well, I mean, Vukic is in a worse spot than him. But otherwise, in, in like the top fifty or thereabouts, mm-hmm. it's pretty hard to find a player who is like gonna just do this in the rankings <laughs> pretty soon. Right, but of course, winning today would kind of help. But um, yeah, let's see. Interesting. Um... And also your thoughts on Murray versus Goffa. I think you and Wanch earlier uh, had mentioned that you could see Goffa beating Murray. Now or never. Hmm, that's true. Yeah, for both, really. I mean, we know that we know something about Murray's future. 
Um, Gofan, I mean, again, we got asked the question, how long is he going to keep slogging it out in qualifiers and challengers, if he's playing challengers? Um, uh, the Phoenix challengers after Indian Wells, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Second week, well, second week of Indian Wells, I mean. Ah, okay. Because, Makes yeah, sense. then you yeah. would have Miami. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's also another question for Gofan. He's not getting younger either. Uh, and he was one of those uh, players from the Dimitrov, Rao, Nish Nishikori team crop. Um, again, plagued with injuries, to be fair, in his prime. Um, yeah, I mean, Gofan is going to be back in the top 100 this year. I'm pretty sure about it. Like, he definitely has the quality, but, you know, return to, like, whatever, top 20 or something, that sounds very unrealistic at this stage. Yeah, I, I just yeah. think that Mare has been even worse. Like, yeah, Mare has been... Yeah, he's won two matches this year. One was against that, Alexander. That, that sums Miller. it up. That's um, what Murray has been. Yeah. One was yeah. against Alexander Miller. And in the other, on a very fast court, he hit eight winners to beat Dennis Chappell. <sighs> Oof. And, uh, yeah. That's all I could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sean, yeah, that's true. Uh, he was doing some commentary on uh, for the tennis channel. Uh, analysis and commentary, if I'm not mistaken. And then he came back. He put together that run in Miami, won Mallorca, you know, made the quarter. I guess remember. his question's more, was he was he not planning yeah. on continuing playing until suddenly he yeah, realized... Yeah, I think he, he was contemplating that. Oh, should I actually continue with tennis? And then... I mean, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the weeks he was commentating on, they, it wasn't like he was taking away from his tennis career. He was basically doing that in three yeah, weeks, so, you know. So, it, sure. no, just, to, I, just to be clear on that. I love this idea from Jane. I get. I think that might sell some tickets. Um, don't, don't we have something like that? The Champions Tour for the retired players? I yeah. think she's more talking about active players who are probably in their 30s, oh. like Goffin, Vavrinka, Murray, RBA, Gasquet. Yeah, I like that now. idea too. Um, but obviously the, there's going to be the there's too much tennis during the season brigade coming at us. But... Here's the thing. Obviously, we could shave off some parts of the season to accommodate this, maybe. Um, I, I don't like that. I mean, that would be a waste of money. Um, let's not waste money on the old <laughs> guard. And, uh, I, I almost said old, old pricks, but I, I changed it to old, old guard, okay? I changed it to old guard. Wow. Damien, <laughs> Damien, a man who's focused on the future. And another man who's joining us is Jerome Coombe. Jerome, how are you doing? You're joining a fascinating conversation right here. Evening, gents. Well, yeah, I'm just immersed in this Draper battle in the third set. Um, oh, okay. Yes. So, uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, I think he saved uh, four or five break points in that opening game. Wait, has Chris O'Connell broken? No, Draper broke, and now O'Connell's got two break back points. Oh, wins. right. He broke back. How's it all going in here? All good? Yeah, we're just, uh, we were actually talking about uh christopher eubanks and then there was something jane brought up about the old gen fan i think you were you, you caught some of that as well yeah uh, made, made, um, made me think a bit about kukushkin who's uh it's doing well in lugano this week um but yeah mm. good idea <laughs> I mean, apart from the fact that, as Jane said, it might be behind each player, which is true. By the way, for those who are here who want to know what's happening between Eubanks and Nakashima, it's one game all currently uh, going with serve, although it's Love 15 on a Nakashima serve. So, um, Jerome, do you want to, yeah, obviously uh, chat with us, but like keep us updated on anything Jack Draper related. I think there'll be people who want to know about that. Um, especially yeah, since it's like quite a good match, right? Is it? I mean, you're saying it's a battle. Is it? Is it um, a fascinating? Yeah, match? I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say fascinating. It's kind of one of the ones we're used to with Draper in this kind of American heat. I mean, it's just a, a slug at the minute. I mean, his physicality is is a, is a big big talking point. I think that's you know what's stopping him. I think from from pushing on to the next level. I think he'll get through. The, it's back on serve, but I think he will somehow get get through the match definitely yeah how are you feeling about his chance if, if he does get through this match how would you how are you feeling about his chance against Zverev because some people have picked that match as an upset alert if that happens to happen I can't see I can't see him taking down Sasha in, in 
in this in this heat. I mean, the, the physicality players maybe indoors. You know, Draper maybe has got a got a chance, but you know, I I just think that's the, the issue with Draper at the minute is is his physicality, and I think he's I don't know what he's got to do, but he's got to you know he's he's clearly working hard, but it, it's that's what's stopping him from. I mean, we saw it at the start of the year in um, in Adelaide, and you know, it's what's stopping him from really just pushing on to that that next level, um, especially in a Masters event where you know the stakes are so high, but. Uh, don't know what you guys think about about Draper and yeah, I spoke a issues. bit about Draper um, at the beginning of the show. I actually agree with a lot of what you've said. Uh, the biggest question mark regarding uh, his prospect right now is physicality. Um, you know, it's holding him back quite a bit. Quite a few retirements or his career. I mean, the most recent one being in Acapulco. Um, you know, he had the, so far the biggest run. You know, in his career, made the final. I think. Uh, where where was Adelaide earlier this year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, lost that one to Lehechka, and there was there was that match at the Australian Open right after winning. He threw up. Um, so yeah, the, those are things that you do wonder. Um, but yeah, that, you know, once he uh, once he gets that under control, um, I mean, we, we know that Yannick Sinner also struggled quite a bit with uh, his own physicality for quite some time until you know he became a tough mm. cookie so once draper gets that going you know but we we're talking about yeah. potential top 30 top 20 um but yeah i yeah, there definitely. are quite a few people who picked draper to beat swerve much like you i don't see it at the moment um mm. yeah, he did make the far from last year you know in indian wells he made the yeah. far from last year uh, yeah yeah, quarters. You was it round? Sorry, fourth, fourth round. U.S. Open as well. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to say that you know he can play a few matches in Indian Wells. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying. Yeah, to definitely, say. definitely. Oh yeah, he lost um, to Alcaraz last year, right? Yeah, and retired yeah. also. All oh, right. Yeah, that's true. He beat Andy and then lost to. Yes, he beat uh, Ridi, uh, Evans, and Murray. Yeah. That's a good question. Actually, speaking of Andy, Jerome, are you planning on keeping an eye on Andy's match as well? Yeah, I'll definitely, definitely keep an eye on that later. I mean, it's it meant to start it's the next match on, I think, about 10. But um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, again, you know, I mean, this whole whole talk about Andy, um, I don't really, it's a really tough one. I mean, it's obviously sad to, to kind of see him kind of, shrugging off all, all the questions. I mean, it's completely fair enough. We shouldn't really be, you know, looking in too much into, into his retirement and just, just let the guy play tennis. But at the same time, it is also sad to see him in, not really producing the level that we know he he demands of himself. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you're right. So, Andy's tough. next on Stadium 1 against Goffan after this Eubanks uh, Nakashima match. I mean, um, Damien, uh, Shrihari, are you watching the um, Eubanks uh, Nakashima match? Can you give us any thoughts on this this battle so far? <clears throat> yeah, I can give Damien. you one very interesting stat, and uh, let me just let me just find it in a second. But oh yeah, okay, I know it now. So if you were to guess for how many consecutive uh, return games has Christopher Eubanks failed to create a break point? Uh, what? If, so like, the past, if like on this streak. the streak is active. The streak is active. Um, um I want to say like fifty. Yeah, four, <laughs> yeah. The, the it's way twenty nine. It, it's twenty nine, but you know, okay, it's, fine. <laughs> it's insane. I mean, yeah. yeah, still crazy. I guess. James Duckworth, of course, in Dallas, then um, Kasper Ruud in Acapulco, despite winning a set. He actually did not generate a break point in that match. And also here, uh, so far, two games against Nakashima. There we go. And the so, service game is pretty quick. Pretty quick service games from both? or hmm? The first few, yeah. I mean, it's just the fourth game, you know. Yeah. Eubanks slapping some forehands and you know it's low margin. Yeah, well, I'm trying to catch that stream, but Tennis TV is saying it's unavailable, which is so odd. So I'm only able to stream Draper and O'Connell at the moment. Maybe I'll don't let do me that. start on Tennis TV. I mean, um, yeah, still, yeah. still, not, I'm still not going to pay you 
tennis TV, you either start doing a better job and you actually show all the qualifying doubles and all the, uh, what am I missing? Oh, outside courts. And then you might actually convince me. But for now, uh, raising the price for your crappy uh, service is just... Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's it's quite expensive. And they don't even show... Um, you know, I remember last year I was watching some 250s and they don't even show the, the, the final of the doubles. I find yep. that so, so, so strange. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then they're going to try to so. tell you that they're promoting doubles, which, you know... Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, it, it doesn't have a big ceiling. Like, I don't think doubles could suddenly become a very watchable thing for fans around the world. I think it's kind of doomed. But at the same time, like, we can't say that there has ever been any effort to promote it. Like, there's there literally mm -hmm. hasn't. Like, no one has tried. So we, at the same time, just can't say that it's been done and, you know, there's no chance. No, actually, it's never been tried. And yeah, things like that. I mean, 500s have unstreamed finals for doubles a lot of the time. And yeah, uh, yeah, of course, most mean. tennis fans will not be, you know, determined enough to watch them on a betting stream somewhere. Well, yeah, either they, either they Riley want to know how or be they really just happy be about that to somewhere. Um, uh, Tom um, Paul, Taylor Fritz, <laughs> like the whole US Davis Cup team who basically fought that. Marty well, Fish yeah, as well, right? As well, Marty Fish as well, because he was kind of fired for it if you may that that's so strange what's the deal with them i mean that that's the country that produced the brian brothers so what's the oh now one of the, the bryans is the captain after that whole incident so yeah but you know th th it's not like they weren't like fully right because well, a lot of the time you just see random doubles players get into doubles despite not playing it and they're winning you know Mahajang this year, I don't know, whatever. Kokinakis, Kyrgios, Hijikata, Kubler. So it's it's not a given that putting Raji Fram in the doubles is actually better than Taylor Fritz and Tommy Paul, for example. Draper had a regulation backhand drive volley and he's dumped it into the net and now O'Connell's up a break. Yeah. I mean, in that game, he just started playing pretty ridiculous tennis, O'Connell, but... Yeah, I mean... Uh... Jerome, I can relate to that because having watched Medvedev play him at the U.S. Open, he drove me nuts as well. Um, I mean, there was the there was that third set. Well, he had no business coming close to winning, it, and then he takes it. Medvedev is up a break, and he has like a bunch of match points on uh, in the tiebreaker. And uh, Draper is playing O'Connor. Oh no, I meant like Medvedev that Medvedev match. Oh, the O'Connor. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, it was at the US Open last year. Um, he lost the third set out of the blue. And then... Yes. Speaking of Medvedev, how do you, how do you think he's going to get on? I mean, he likes mm. these conditions. No, he what? hates them. But... What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> David, come in quick. Get in there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure he just threw it out there for, for just to get a reaction from us. No way, no way. I mean, yeah, he here's the thing. I mean, I filled out my bracket, but if I show it, I, I the people are going to laugh at it. So I'd rather not. I have a lot of upsets, though, in the bracket. Um, so just tell us, you know, who's in the final or something. You know, you don't need uh, to show the whole thing, but you want to know who's in the final? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know who's the champion, but let me spell out the finalists for you. Um, let me pull that sure. Up. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can start whichever round you're comfortable with, you know, semis, final. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I have. Okay, fine. I, have, I got two out of two right so far. That's. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, mean, um, it's not, I have. It's not. <laughs> But only one, ha only one match has been finished, has it? Hasn't it? Uh, in the men's, Kokenakis uh, just won. Yeah. So how do you have okay. two out of two? So Hurkac and Kiafo in the finals. <laughs> Wait, what Kiafo? Did you say? Wait, <laughs> I missed it. I mean, okay, you, you weren't doing it seriously. I mean, okay, yeah. Gen sure. Genuinely, no, I have Hurkac winning in Newells. Like, no, like because okay. I see the whole I mean, draw <laughs> falling like a. Okay, fine. I'll spell it out. Even I, I have Sina. Tommy Even Paul Alex beating Sina. Djokovic in the fourth round. That can't happen. That can't happen. 
and that's remotely possible, but you're just doing it to jinx to jinx it, like an well, anti jinx. I, I don't believe in jinxing, first of all. I mean, Second, then why are you picking Tommy Paul over Novak Djokovic? No, because I mean, I just historically over, over the past few years, Novak and Indian ones, like, I mean. He hasn't played. I, I, just, I have a feeling about this tournament where everybody's going to lose early, uh, but everyone else thinks, including John, that most people at least think that most of the top seeds are going to make it unscathed. So I mean, I don't know. Like I, I just feel, <laughs> I just feel like everyone's going to lose early because of. I the... mean, you don't have to explain yourself with Hurkacz, honestly. Like you know, it's it's a remote possibility, but it is. But Francis Tiafo. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I have a meeting. Okay, I need time. to ask: What are you thinking? Sinner's going to run out of gas because I I make Sinner my title favorite here. Right, I have him losing to who is that? Struff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As long as long as I, I was I like, as I'll... long as it's Shelton or Manchik, sure. But what? Struff can. Why not? I mean, he he's he's dangerous for any player. Uh, Your bracket is good. I have to tell you, though. Like, I I I like it because at least it's different. You know, it's not like yeah. Yeah, well, I just I don't know. I, I got BS. to the fourth round and I'm like, no, this. I don't see a lot of these seeds making it through. Um, and yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think I have. Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I have Tiafo beating Menjik. He, he he made a run last year. I thought, okay, why not? If if there's any tournament where he can pick up his form again, uh, Sean called me the angry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's accurate. Can't teach you the route. <laughs> anyway, uh, Vash was going you... bold by picking all the po- all the top seeds to go deep, and you are going <laughs> bold by picking none of the top seeds to go deep. So yeah, it is a yeah, very well, opposite. It's it's going bold. He's going bold. It's it's mental. I mean, okay. So John will like it. John will like it. Damien, yeah, how I, you we go? spoke to him about his bracket. I told him he's being bold because he picked Djokovic, Medvedev, Sinner, and Alcaraz, all of them to make the semis. Uh, I, think I think that's, that's boring. boring. Really. That's so boring. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. We started this from Medvedev, right? And I just wanted to say that, yeah, I don't really believe in him going deep. I mean, last year it was fine because there was so much rhythm that he had confidence. You know, he kind of just like sleepwalked through Indian Wells, more or less. Of course, there was that. I guess, much, but which, also let's forget about it. But <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, you know, he does. It's not like he doesn't complain or doesn't <sighs> uh, sort of have melt. I, I don't want to say meltdowns, but doesn't show frustration. But what I'm seeing this year. Is that he's working through it rather than just capitulating? Uh, he's been that, he's been quite 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 open about that as well. He said he's, he's yeah to he's change and... exactly. He he even mentioned at the beginning of the year that that's something he wanted to change about himself. And even that match against Zverev was so close to losing, and he said that I'm going to try something different. If I lose, I lose. But you know he I mean, pulled through. Honestly, that. that that's not what I was referring to really. Like, I don't think that that's my reasoning. Like, like mostly that just that last year he was, yeah, so high and just, just, you know, mm. flying around this part of the season. So like, regardless of the conditions, like you could throw him in onto any court. And I, I guess well. so, but I you mean, could have probably really said that maybe about 21 up. as well, because yeah, he, it was, he, I think he made the Australian open final and it was at the back of, uh, back end of that 20 match win streak then he won a title in marseille then again he just fell off the rails for a while uh until you know the end of wimbledon uh we he put together a run at rg which none of us saw coming uh, i thought he was probably going on first run again to bublik he didn't um but yeah, like I, I still think okay. Yeah, he he mentioned at the press conferences in Dubai that he he doesn't enjoy it in Indian Wells, but he's still gonna, you know, he last year, uh, he 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 matured in a way that he still you know had some really good results on surfaces he doesn't particularly enjoy. Won a Masters on clay and made the finals on in, in at Indian Wells, made the semis in Wimbledon, so. He says that you know that gives him some confidence. So I have him making the semis, um, losing to Hurkacz. I think yeah. that's a reasonable pick. But um, 
Yeah, but Let's like see. his enjoyment of the surface is not what I'm going for. Like literally, well, not in that sense, at least not in the sense that he will be turned off mentally in any way. It's just that, you know, someone will beat him because of the way that this surface doesn't interact or, you know, interacts poorly with his game. Um, that's more or less, you know, my reasoning yeah. rather than actually, you know, him not being able to deliver mentally because of that. Um, and his draw is also feel like with players who generally give him issues. Uh, there's a Manarino, there's a Corda, um, someone else that I'm not remembering right now. Like instead of Corda, it could be Safiurin or Evans, right? I think, I mean, both of these guys are very capable of beating him on this court. So basically it's going to be like a tricky round every single time. So out of the top four seeds to me, he's definitely the most volatile. If he's actually the only one making the semis, like, it, yeah, I mean, it won't be, you know, an unreasonable, an, an unreasonable thing, but it will certainly be quite surprising. I would agree with you, Damien, on that assessment. I do think he's got the toughest run and given where he's kind of at, um, yeah, I could see him uh, being at risk to any of these really, really good players he runs into. Um, I just want to say before... Uh, Medvedev super fan uh, jumps in to respond to uh, Keen. Uh, no, um, I don't think Medvedev is boring to watch. I think he's, I, I he's not my favourite style of player in terms of you know I do prefer seeing a little more aggression, um, but um, I doesn't make it not interesting, especially him as a character when he's on court. Um, and I find watching the physical challenge for his opponent, trying to break him down and hit through him quite fascinating um and um just just as um uh, a heads up i'm i'm also watching um his fellow uh russian mira andreva on court she's just broken voinets um with uh with some lovely play it has to be said eventually voinets getting frustrated um but yeah i mean jerome where do you kind of sit on the uh the medvedev side of things well yeah i mean just talking about his <clears throat> technique and place are there i mean the things you're describing obviously you don't want to compare it to Djokovic but that is sort of what Djokovic's game <clears throat> is slightly based around is that you know that that push that you know turning defense into attack um and that's part of why 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 tennis is so enjoyable to watch i mean people always speak you know about Federer and his his game style is so elegant to watch but for me personally it's it's these players like Medvedev who are also really enjoyable to watch and, and the physicality of it the grinds um that's why i get enjoyment out of so yeah i definitely don't think he's boring to watch at all yeah there we go um uh so yeah i've uh just to kind of pick up i think uh let's just uh put pick up on so where we're at with the tennis update so i said andreva is currently leading 2-1 with a break in the opening set um draper is still down a break in the deciding set of his match against uh, Chris O'Connell. And it's still going with serve between Eubanks and Nakashima, as you can see on the screen. Um, bit of a slow start for San Diego champion Katie Bolter, um, who is already an early breakdown to Camilla Georgi to love. Um, that's probably the only other live score it's worth bringing you an update on. Um, Kopf has just won the second against Shevchenko 6-1 to take it to a decider. Um, but yeah, so a few things to kind of uh, keep an eye on across uh, these matches. Um, so obviously we're talking about, we're talking a lot about the men's draw and sort of what we think of it. Um, we've mentioned his name a few times already. Uh, Novak Djokovic, um, back at Indian Wells for the first time since uh, 2019, um, has won here a few times before. Um, but I mean, Damien, is it me or are we not really are we only really backing him to win slams at the minute and we're not super confident about him in one thousand and masters one thousands? There's no slam for the next three months. I mean, you know, if he's not gonna be focused here, why would you even come? And I do think that there's gonna be a certain part of him as well, like sort of, you know, on a mental level that we just want to play well here, given, you know, for how many years he hasn't been able to. And also it's not like he was choosing not to come, but, you know, it was because of his vaccination status. And before we get into, like, a whole discussion of, well, he sort of was choosing. Yeah, 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 sure. Never mind. It's not really what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, he wasn't able to come for a few years. I think he's going to be hungry. And also his draw is just sort of really allowing him to tune into his game in, a, in the first few rounds. I mean, the first round couldn't be any easier. Mochizuki or Vukic. 
Then you have like Ferdinand is also, you know, Echeverry. We've seen that matchup before. It's not really working or whoever the unseeded players are, they also were in dangerous. And by the time he gets to the forefront, Umber, Paul, Mikkelsen, he can handle all that. Like, honestly, I don't really know how either of these guys really put him under any pressure other than Umber, who I don't think will be able to do it in Indian Wells. By the way, Brandon Nakashima just broke as literally just, oh. uh, I mean, you know, I'm trying to really be nice here, but Christopher Eubanks' baseline game is just horrid at the moment. Like Nakashima just put in a couple of returns and there was, you know, a backhand shank there, a plus one forehand that was just like, you know, again, a total slap despite the really being uncalled for. And um, yeah, that's kind of how Chris Eubanks has been playing since um, Wimbledon. And actually I checked Shihari and we were like, you know, sort of wrong, but he only made one um, quarterfinal since in Atlanta. So he only won consecutive matches right after Wimbledon, just literally one time, but otherwise, no. And just as I'm speaking about this, uh, he yeah. actually has another backhand shank. And you know, that's been the match, really, for him. Jump in on that point, actually, Damien. Um, just want to ask you to follow up on that, because obviously we're talking about you saying his baseline game has been shocking since Wimbledon. Arguably, he did that quarterfinal run he made at Wimbledon wasn't made based on his baseline game. He was having an incredible couple of weeks serving and his net game was kind of keeping him in the midst, mid middle of it. Um, but it has to be backed up. Run. No, but it has to, it has to be backed up. I mean, he's always going to be serving incredibly well. He did improve his, uh, serve, his net play. Yes, sure. Uh, I think probably I would say late, um, yeah, late 2022 when he was playing all these finals against Ben Shelton. Like that was more or less when uh, when he started actually transitioning to the net much better, sure. But it has to be backed up by something. And like Wimbledon, Mallorca, these were the events when that slap forehand, because it has like zero spin on it, it has only pace. When you have this, these graphs, right, of like, you know, the combination of a player's spin and pace on the forehand. And Arthur Fils is always right there in the top right corner. Chris Eubanks is just straight up to the right because he has zero pace on the uh, zero spin on that forehand and just basically slaps it. Uh, it was actually going in like, you know, at a very high rate. Of course, it's low margin. Of course, you can't really repeat it. But at the same time, he did have Mallorca plus Wimbledon. So that's literally like 10 matches in a row. And also, of course, Miami last year, when you, he also had to win like six to, to get to the quarters. So, uh, of course, including qualifying. So uh, I think this, the serve alone is kind of what we're seeing right now. Like that's that's his game when he does not have, you know, anything in his baseline game. But when he can put it together for a couple of weeks, like last year, well, it still required a few very tough wins. But, you know, after all the tennis that he played was was pretty insane. Jerome, you just did a sharp intake of breath. Are we look things looking bad for Jack Draper? Yes, yeah, now a double double break. Uh, O'Connell is about to to serve it out. But yeah, I mean, just looking there, they had a bit of a zoom in on uh, Draper at the changeover. Just looks physically and mentally pretty drained out there. Um, pretty sad to see. But, you know, O'Connor's upped his game as well. He's forcing the areas, but Draper does not look uh, like he's moving very well or nowhere near um, how he was moving earlier in this match. I mean, it's just, yeah, all coming back to the to the physicality there. I don't want to keep talking about it, but it's it's tough to see. Um, really tough to see. Is that what you're seeing as well, Shari? Uh Yeah, well, J Jerome told me that he was too love up with the break. <laughs> Um, I <laughs> caught the stream again when he was two one, but yeah, like he, he's struggling. Um, and sadly, it's not surprising to see that as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Come on. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just wanted to come back to to Djokovic actually. Um, while we while we're on that that point, yeah. I mean, I completely agree with what Damien's saying. I think he's you know, got that draw to kind of tee him up nicely for the last stages. But also, I think it's worth noting that, you know, this, this happened sort of last year when he lost that Wimbledon and then he went on that that run. I mean, he just had something to prove almost. And I feel, I feel as if we're going to see something like that uh, now, you know, after the, the Australian Open heartbreak. I think, we, he, you know, mentally he's, he, he is going to go and, prove something now so i think we could just see a, a rampage but that's just my my view um on the situation 
one last rampage, one last Novak rampage. <laughs> I don't see why not, actually. Um, only thing that I had in mind was, okay, he's not played here for five years. How's he going to adjust? He's not getting younger. Uh, does require some level of physicality to actually contest on these courts. I mean, obviously, at his absolute prime was when he was winning these titles. He won this three in a row. 2014 16 obviously in 20 2008 and 11 uh so yeah that's and then again since he last won there's nothing that i've seen from him i think he played thrice uh i don't really count that taro daniel match in my books it never happened um then of taro course kind of um, says it didn't too like he says he doesn't know how he won it so <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think Novak also mentioned in the third set he played like he, he played worse than an amateur. Um, and that whole match he had, I think yeah, he committed what almost sixty on four errors. That's that's crazy for three sets. Uh, and he, again, like like you mentioned, he was actually five two up in the first set, and he won the second. So he could have even won that match playing at that level. Um, but yeah, 2000, in 2017, lost to Kyrgios again. You know, that was when his injury was sort of peaking. Um, 19 was such a bizarre loss to Cole Schreiber. Uh, hasn't played since. So that's why I'm feeling a little low on his chances. But I also see Jerome's point of view. Uh, you know, he he does have that motivation. Okay, he's he was dethroned in Australia. Uh, and we know that whenever there's such chatter of whether or not Novak uh, you know, it's no longer sort of invincible, no longer the man to beat. He rises up even stronger and, you know, he goes on these beatdowns. Uh, it's what happened when, what, after Wimbledon. He he won every big tournament mm. he played for the rest of the season. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it could happen. I mean, I'm not ruling it out. And also, back to what Damien had said about, I mean, if he's not going to be focused here, why would he have even come here? That's also true. Um, and I know that in 21, this was before the vaccine mandate in the U.S., uh, obviously because he played the U.S. Open. He didn't play any of the tournaments uh, in North America other than the U.S. Open, uh, which means he didn't want to. But he did want to in, I think, twenty, yeah, 22 and 23, he did want to. And he couldn't. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's true. We do forget 21 he probably could have won played Indian Wells, but by that point in the season, he was out of gas. I mean, we saw what happened in that US Open final. Um, yeah. So very. Oh yeah, there was Miami. I think he opted out of that, which was which took place in March. He didn't play yeah. that. Um, and yeah, and that yeah. So it's pretty interesting. I think um, the draw helps a bit for sure. I mean, if he does play Hugo Umber in the fourth round, I wouldn't at all be. Um, worried about an upset considering these conditions i don't even know if Hugo will make it there to be honest so uh looks like the draper match is all over mm. yeah finished with an ace um draper out o'connell through that's a pretty big win for o'connell but he was playing the better tennis throughout that third set and ultimately gets the job done incredibly disappointing not to get the draper zverev round two but no. we'll, we'll we'll never we'll never know. We'll, we'll have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to the the question about Kazakhstan, honestly, I I wrote an article about it like two years ago, so I kind of know some stuff just very quickly. There was this uh, massive billionaire, uh, Buat Utemutarov, who's actually the vice president of ITF even, and he basically yeah, they just use all of his money to get the players <laughs> to convert. Yes, that that's kind of the uh, oh, wow. well, actual response here. And even the president, of course, the legendary Nur Sultan uh, Nazarbayev, is his surname, you know, the guy that the capital was even named for, he also is a tennis fan and like he also enjoys tennis. So that probably helps too. But yeah, it's basically all about one billionaire who uh, spent an enormous amount of money on getting both the players, but also the schooling, the, you know, the system, you know, the, the juniors, the, uh, the system in place. So um, yeah, it's kind of the money of one guy. Essentially, that's made Kazakhstan a tennis a tennis empire. Of course, it's pretty different right now when someone switches because there's also the argument that well, probably they wanna 
uh, just you know not be Russian and not face the consequences of uh, of potentially you know that potentially could emerge from that. But um, yeah, just a few years ago, obviously, it was all about the money. There and you the go. Funding well, let's that, face uh, it. The Russian system couldn't give them. If we, which is what happened to Rybakina, really, Rybakina was kind of uh, ruled out by the Russians as a prospective talent. So she went over to Kazakhstan, yeah. who decided they would invest in her. Um, exactly. But uh, that she's the most famous example. I, did that also happen with Bublik, or was he native Kazakhstani? No, no, no. Bublik is also Russian. I mean, native Kazakhstani, it's. Well, it's pretty rare. I mean, you've got like what, uh, you have CIF, Skatov, I think. But um, is there like a what about time example? Andrei Golubev, I'm pretty sure he's Russian, but, but you know, and I don't Kukushkin? know. Let's, let's check. Kukushkin, Kukushkin was yeah. definitely Russian. Kukushkin was definitely mm. Russian. I'm, I'm talking about like, yeah, native Kazakhstani players. Yeah, Golubev is Russian. Uh, Kukushkin is Russian for sure. Um, yeah, it, it, it's very rare. I mean, maybe Zarina Diaz would be uh, probably native Kazakhstan, right? Like, that makes sense. No, I, 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 don't, I don't look at the birthplaces. Um, no, it's... no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about how she looks as well. And um, yeah, yeah, she mm. she is native Kazakhstan, actually. So it's definitely Diaz, it's Skatov, it's CAF. There's, there's, a, there's a couple of players, basically. But for the most part, yeah, they just have uh, players both from Russia. And yeah, in all the cases, like it's literally the same thing. The Russian system is kind of broken, even though they have so many players. Uh, the Russian system was so it was kind of broken. So basically, whenever there was a talented uh, youngster, they kind of just submitted the offer. And like all of these Russian players, well, I'm not saying all of them, but like a lot of these Russian players that we're seeing on tour right now, it's not like they didn't get the offer. They got it and it, they just rejected it. You know, maybe they had enough funding. Maybe they didn't want to you know, sell their country in a way or whatever. But um, but yeah, I mean, they basically made offers to everyone who was kind of like left out by the Russian system. All right. How is how's Eubanks doing now? I mean, only three games they're on serve. Uh... Um, yeah, as long as he can serve pretty well, <laughs> then, then he's probably well, going to be think, fine. I mean, honestly, um... Brandon's return has been... Like the, the last few months, maybe the last year or so, that's probably been the worst part of his game. But to his credit, he did improve the serve a lot. So, um, well, it's kind of like the first set for now. Like if Brandon just gives him enough, he gives himself enough opportunities, you would probably expect him to get a game once per set where Eubanks is just, yeah, all over the place. But the streak of return games without uh, break points generated is getting to 33 by now, I think. This and is... he's only lost six points uh, on serve today, Nakashima, so far. Which is, and he's not someone you you would you think of as having a big serves. Oh no, no, that has changed actually. You know, um, over let's say the last uh, six months or so, he's actually been serving incredibly well. Like on the challenger tour, that and like just the let's say weight of shot that he brings on every uh, on every stroke, literally, like how. Uh, consistently he can go hard and deep like that that's been the, his mess his main two things i wonder if on the main tour it's still gonna look like that like maybe the surface is going to be as threatening but i do feel like he's improved it actually significantly um by the way for those who maybe are interested in what's happening um we've got um on the mira andreva match um it's not going great for andreva it's kind of a bit of a push fest this match to be honest um yeah. She had a 2-1 lead with a break. Voinets broke back with some really scratchy play from Andreva, then held serve again in a really scrappy game, um, including what I would call very sort of accidental improvised drop shot winner. Um, and uh, now Andreva is leading 30-15 um, in this service game at 2-3. Um, so just to keep you updated on, as, as per usual, um, I seem to be the one person watching the WTA in a sea of ATP. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm watching Bolter now. Oh, you're watching Bolter, Georgie. Yes, yeah, so Bolter broke yeah. back, didn't she? Um, but Georgie she did broke break back. back. That's correct. Yep, straight back again. I think it was a long game on Bolter's serve and uh, Georgie's broken. Both, I mean, it's what what is sort of expected from Bolter after such a good week. Um, you know, you no one's really expecting her to 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 push push on now in Indian Wells, um, but it's, it's going to be a tough draw. I mean, if she, even if she gets past uh, Georgie here today, which I think she w could well do, she's playing Noskova 
in the second round, obviously the same Norska weather, um, knocks out Sviatek and that could be a repeat of the Australian Open third round, um, Sviatek and Noskova, which would be a great match. I'm sure Iga will be keen to get her revenge. And the yeah, third round will... is very doable for Katie, but you know, after that, I mean, beating Iga in yeah, Indian Wells, do, nah. And do we mention mm. that Shiontek has a carbon copy of her AO drop? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Collins, Collins and Noskova, yeah. yeah, yeah in the quarters cool. as well. Yeah, the thing is, last year, the same player beat her both in AO and Indian Wells, so that's something to... Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was Rabakina. Um, who, who's the mm, tallest yes. player with the least? That's a good I, one. I want to say Op Opelka and Hachanov. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no. Opelka, I mean, not, not as good as Isner or Karlovic, but still. No, Hachanov, I mean, though? Hmm, maybe. Federico Del Bonis? Oh, yeah. Oh, he had such a weird service motion. Like he was, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Del Bonis. Yeah. Who, who was the, Definitely uh, could have gotten more. Oh, Echeverry as well. Echeverry, I think, could be a thing. Although he, he is improving it, you know. He's going to get there. But, but like, for now, he's still... Uh, how tall is Echeverry? 6'4"? I don't know. I can't do, you know. What? Okay. Full time. Name, this guy's pretty no, I was talking about players six six and above. Um, uh, what about Zverev? Zverev is like six five, six five. Wow. You know, yeah, I was gonna, say. I was gonna say Zverev. No, no, please no, don't. Zverev now, yeah, Zverev now is top ten servers in the world. Easy. Tremendously good. Yeah. Uh, like he's worked okay. on it. Uh, he, the, I know, the, he was the a running joke. Aaron's like. Yeah, like it's a joke, but uh, they are very often just brought up, you know. Yeah, double faults. Yeah, game. but it, it's just such an easy sort of target to laugh at. But you know, his first service um, to to get it at the rate that he's getting it in without actually you know taking off any speed, it's insane. Yeah, I think uh, there there was a time when you know I, he curtailed his ball toss and that helped him. Before that, his he was his ball toss was a bit too high, and that sort of is what led to so many double faults. I remember that was when there was the running joke of Zverev and double. There was that match against Schwartzman at the U.S. Open. <laughs> it was a sixty-four mile per hour double fault where the ball bounced before hitting the net. Um, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So it was can that you, bad. Can you just Kenny Kenny like that? I've I've not. Kenny. Yeah. I mean, how tall is Kenny? Like six, what, four probably or something? Or I don't know. Maybe he's actually even taller. But Kenny used to be, well, I guess. Well, he's actually over two meters even. Yeah, that makes sense then. I mean, he, he was never, like, he's a good server, but he was never like, you know, yeah, six, say, eight, I yeah. would also say, say the same with Opelka. Like, I mean, he was tall and he is tall and he, he got some good slice and sometimes good kick, but... It's not the same. Like, it was not as good a spot server as Isner was, for example, for that height. I understand what you mean, but I'd still say, you know, yeah. If he's playing, he's still, like, top five, top ten on the tour, easy. No, all right. Yeah. Hachanov, not very effective. He's Hachanov, not a good spot Hachanov. server. Um, How tall is Hachanov? Hachanov. He's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. So, what was yeah. that, actually? Six, five. Okay. Nine. So it's like Del Potro or something. I mean, honestly, yeah. Del Potro for a while was also an answer to this. I don't know if we actually want to count him, but like he could have done a lot more with the serve. Yeah, well, he, his most effective serves were usually uh, out wide or sometimes the body serves. Um, I, I don't yeah. remember too many good spot serves from him. Chilich on his day was amazing. No, no, no. Uh, Chilich, Chilich definitely isn't an answer to this, but but the Potter, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's Chris Eubank serving? <laughs> uh, he actually was very close to getting to a break point in the previous game. He had a couple of deuces on the Nakashima serve, but now there's a fifteen thirty. Uh, you know, he had to go to the net. He's volleying. Well, his reaction, let's say, was a little slowish. So this could be a, a key point if he loses here fifteen thirty, though. Sure. Which what match have you got on your screen now that um, O'Connell and Drape has done? 
Yeah, yeah, well, I closed it out after because whatever I tried to stream said unavailable. So let me check again. Um, I don't need to know that. Um, so <laughs> I will uh, I, I'll continue with that. Yeah. Uh, okay, it works now. now. So I guess I can tune in too. Whatever. Right. Draper. I'm sorry, Eubanks and Nakashima. Yeah. Um, so we've got, okay, so the two of you checking out Eubanks and Nakashima. I'm keeping an eye on Mira Andreva and Katie Voyets. Um, Voyets held again. This is really not a great performance from Andreva. Even if she does win, she's had loads of opportunities. She's not taking them. This is a lot of errors coming. It's There's been a lot of, it's been death by moonball, to be honest. Um, and uh, um, then we've got Jerome keeping an eye on Georgie and Bolter. Um, which uh, Bolter again looks like she's trying to come back on that one. Yeah, she's got a look in now, love 30. Um, yeah, she's, you know, she's staying in there. It's not been pretty from from either of them, but, you know, I think it's going to be a, a slug fest. Always is against someone like Georgie, but, um, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Bolter has a little bit of a dip. We saw that when she won Nottingham and then kind of pretty much went out straight away in Birmingham. Um in uh, albeit to Su Lin, who's a very, very good player. Um, but you know, it, it, it's not uncommon on both tours for someone to win uh, one match, a, a tournament, and then kind of run out of gas the very next week in the next one. Um, and that's, of course, your Sebastian Baez. <laughs> yeah, honestly, what, what a start to the season he's having. But um... yeah, yeah, very as you said. At the, very consistent um, when he's in the draw, a draw that allows him to be. And that's one thing I like about the South American golden swing, whatever people want to call it, because it does throw a spotlight on the players who are actually good on the surface, uh, whose games are game styles are tailor made for clay. Um, they get to uh, you know contest for some big silverware at that level. Um, which is, it, it's not a bad, it's good for sport, you know, for, you, you know, such players to have uh, that kind of exposure. Um, and, you know, I completely just... agree. And I think, I think it's also, I was, I was doing Tabilo, um, Barrios Vera last week, and I was also saying it's such a good, um, platform for players like, you know, Fonseca with, with these younger guys, gives them a, a platform to come through and we, we always we you know we see all the wild cards and whatnot come through in every swing but it seems to me every time i watch the that golden swing it, it's the one that that produces kind of or brings light on on these these youngsters from those countries more more than any other swing i think yeah isn't that because the quality of the fields is weaker <laughs> I shouldn't be I shouldn't be the one saying this because obviously I am you know a big supporter of that swing and everything but um, and the I mean, challenge it, tour yeah but it's kind of so, true you know? Nick went right true. there didn't like Cordoba uh, for example uh, this might be controversial but like scratching Cordoba I totally get that like from the ATP's perspective it's a pointless event like literally it does nothing it has one of the weakest fields in the you know on the tour no crowds compared to the rest of the um of the golden swing i absolutely get that i think if they throw in a big challenger in the same week it's literally going to be the same field so <laughs> go ahead um, why did they scratch sao paulo um it was a pretty good tournament they had a good stage as well i think rio i bit them all right yeah it's also a thing about rio we had players like alcaraz and rude made the, making their breakthroughs at that tournament yeah. Um, um, does anyone want to try and uh, tackle Keen's question? By the way, Keen is throwing us some very, very good questions. Um, we've got a lot of viewers here. Um, you know, feel free to also uh, throw your hat in the ring. Um, uh, you know, whether you're watching on on X, on YouTube, on Twitch, um, throw something in the comments for us to come back to. But juice deciding put point good or bad for doubles. We don't get to talk doubles much on this channel. I have a controversial opinion about this. I think it's good uh, because without it, doubles really has no way to exist anymore. Like, you know, no one watches it. No one follows it week in, week out. I think it really keeps the matches to like a limited time. I can't remember who it was very recently, but some doubles specialist was talking about this. Maybe Jamie Murray 
there was a big interview of Jamie Murray when he was talking about like what he would change in doubles. I think that's that was Jamie actually. And he basically said that we should try to keep the matches even shorter in doubles, like maybe an hour, hour 15. Uh, you know, maybe let's not do sit downs every single changeover because why would we need it in doubles? And I very much agreed with this. Like, in order to save doubles, you gotta make it like this very fast paced action field package. And it's kind of not at the moment, especially if you don't put it, you know, if you don't give the no at scoring uh, into that. Um, I think someone else who like maybe said it uh, to me was uh, Hunter Rees, the American doubles specialist, who like basically said that this is the advantage of doubles, that it's so, you know, every single point matters and it's so sort of uh, like adrenaline field. And uh, we should really be playing into this because for me, it's like the only way to, to save doubles without, without it just being, you know, a massive pain in the ass for the ATP and, and the WTA, like as it is right now, really, you know, as it generates no profits and you just kind of, it's like a subsidiary of sorts. And without, uh, act without, without that, I feel like even less people would be watching doubles, even fewer. Yeah. And on, on that, how, how do we get more people watching doubles? What do you think? <laughs> I think um, make the first I, ever attempt at promoting it. <laughs> yeah, well, I would, I would say like in giving an incentive to some of the best singles players to play doubles, that would draw more crowds. And then, uh, so how? I don't know if it were, but at least the you know the actual double specialists get some exposure that way. Um, I remember in 2011 when I, you know, went to Dubai Tennis Championships. Um, Djokovic, Novak, and Marco Djokovic, they played, uh, I think, Bupati and Pace then. So it was a win win for both. Uh, I mean, obviously, Bupati and Pace, you know, the, one of the most uh, popular pairings uh, in doubles, but most popular in India. Um, and then, you know, there's a large Indian population in Dubai as well. And of course, you know, Djokovic has a large following. So that way, a lot more people, you know, were watching. Uh, you know that match, and I think likewise could be the case with. I mean, all, in 2011, also I remember in Indian Wells, I think Federer and Wawrinka played together, Nadal and Mark Lopez played together. Um, yeah, that way, um, again, the, that that brings in more fans, and then they also get acquainted with the actual double specialists who play against them. Um, so that's the that's what I can think of. Um, right now like, but that's already like kind of like some of the changes that the atp introduced and actually a lot of them that's already like been done like the the way that yeah. you enter doubles events right with your singles ranking it doesn't reflect into the seeding but you enter doubles events on your singles ranking like that these things are already in place really hmm. so how do you I, sort I think of Maybe what yeah. Shahiri is referring to a little bit is maybe a little bit more of a financial incentive for the top players. Maybe you earn a bonus if you if you do a doubles. Um, th that's a possibility. Um, for me, in yeah. terms of like creating genuine fan engagement, um, this is an idea that sort of got raised. I, I can't remember which podcast I listened to that suggested this, but um, team names. Like the most iconic doubles teams are the ones with a distinct identity, like the Bryan brothers, you know, huge in the US. Um, they were, you know, they were put on the main the stadium courts. Um, and if I think about it, when doubles gets the most attention in the UK is when Team GB are playing and suddenly everyone cares about doubles. So that's because that there's a national be... identity behind it. Um, I think if you were to like you you had a set doubles team all year round and you had a cheesy name for it i think people might um i think yeah an another problem another problem with that would be that you know doubles teams are changing yeah. so often as well so it's quite hard to you know to keep up with it all i think a, a lot of it stems from coverage i mean online you know with tennis tv these types of things you know, a lot of people watch these you know these channels i think um so it's just about getting you know more coverage towards them. They've also like these doubles players have, have got they've got personalities too. Um, and when, when you know when when a, the ATP tour they do those videos where the quizzes and stuff like that, you know more things like this, you know creating that interaction. Yeah, definitely. But it's it's a tough one for sure. Yeah. Also, I would say a lot. So, so, yeah. Sorry. Uh, a lot. At oh. least one session per day or one match per day uh, on the center courts 
for doubles. Yeah. Um, yes, then, yes, yes, yes. They have no other choice but to watch it. Uh, I was I, thinking oh, about this. I was thinking about this recently with the Golden Swing and with like Santiago, where or, or some, one of these events where they all basically all base ended up looking like okay. So on the main court you've got four matches, and on court one you've got one doubles. Yeah. And obviously they are doing this for a reason. Like it's literally a cash grab because they can do day session and they can do night session. Whereas if they did day session with let's say one doubles, one singles, and night session with two singles no one would buy the day session tickets. But if we force the tours to have one doubles match on center every day, like that's actually of help. Yeah, I very much agree with this. Yeah. Cool. That, that could go miles, I would say. Um, Sean, no one would watch it. We still run into the same issue. No one would watch it. Yeah. I, I have yeah, to say, no I, do, I do... I do think um, on going back to your point about sort of the, the putting on centre court, which I, um, that was one of the big uh, fantastic things about going to the ATP finals. So I went to the ATP finals three years in a row, 2010, 2011, 2012, when they were at the O2 in London. I have no excuse for why I never went back other than I couldn't get time off work or school. Oh, Federer stopped um, winning, that's why. Right. Um, I mean, there's also a big uh, factor, but also Federer stopped winning that long before um i went well actually anyway. he won 10 and 11 and then he lost in the final in 12 oh, that's true, and yeah. went back. Wait. that's true i saw fedra play in 11 and 12 i saw him play fish in 2011 and sip in 2012 but anyway um what uh i uh but what i found was like the doubles being in there was a fantastic part of the experience and like everyone was there like you had a ticket for the whole session it was part of the session um and uh yeah, that was a great part of the experience to just watch a really, really good doubles match. I think one of the ones I remember was I also saw Rahan Bapana. I can't remember who his doubles partner was at the time, um, but there were some very enthusiastic Bapana fans in the crowd that sort of made it a very interesting atmosphere. Probably would have been Qureshi. At the I time. think it was in Qureshi at the time. Yeah, I think it. That was dubbed the Indo Pak team, you know, in, in, an Indian and a, a Pakistani. And the... Same doubles team, you know, it was sort of out of the ordinary. I remember they even made the US Open final, if I'm not mistaken, in 2010. So, yeah, yeah, uh, Panda's only before the, the two of Ebden now, yeah, yeah. And Sean, we, yeah, we've made that point. Is the yeah, um, yeah, the only way to make it a top singles player, uh, is top players for doubles, but um, yeah, I see what is. Damien is saying or where Damien's coming from when he's talking about. Eubanks' ground game. It's, it's, it's atrocious, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the shot tolerance is so bad. Like, I mean, yeah. he gets into these rallies, like he's mixing things up with the chip return, or, you know, he's uh, keeping Nakashima guessing with the slice. But what What was that? That, that, that last point, what was it? He gets a, a deep forehand from Nakashima. He tries to reach for it. It's just... He's yeah, just he's just like sticking his racket out in hopes of the ball getting back into play. Athletically, this was like, yeah, uh, I just saw the point that you were referring to, and yeah, um, well, well, uh, I mean, yeah, kudos to him. You know, he's a great guy, great character, definitely to have on the tour. But um, for sure, it is a bit of a mystery how he got to number thirty in the world. I mean, <laughs> it, it kind of I mean, tells it, you that when you have massive weapons. Like you're probably gonna just gonna have you know one year or let's say one you know two or three good events when yeah you're just gonna be a beast. Um, yeah, it I mean, gives hope to Giovanni Pecci Pericard. It gives hope to <laughs> I don't know whoever. I mean guys like God. that. You know? Okay. Yeah, I want to ask Damien one thing about the challenge. I mean, I, I don't know if you've come across this YouTube channel that posts you know tennis drama from various parts of the season. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of footage from challenger tournaments, and like you have players like getting into one another's faces, and like all the time, like something small happens, and then the player like sits on the chair, call the supervisor, call the supervisor now. Like, does that happen often, as often as they show? And why do you think that maybe? I mean, I don't know if it happens that more often on than that, you know, that much more often than on the main tour. It's just that the challengers, you know, you have almost 200 events a year now, so mm. you know. There's also going to be four or five times more action than on the main tour, in a way. Mm. So I think that's mostly the reason, honestly. Um, I think but, also not, yeah. yeah, not to talk about refereeing, but I, I, whenever I watch challenges, I've seen kind of some 
you know, some bad mistakes, admittedly, by the the officials. And I, I think uh, uh, some of the players can maybe, um, I don't know, the integrity is questioned sometimes with the players. I mean, there's there's not much uh, traction, media traction. So maybe the players think they can get away with things more often, you know, and with this kind of behaviour, I think that's another thing. Um, but yeah. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, yeah. you don't you don't have challenges like at almost any events. A few if French indoor challengers if have one have the challenge system introduced, but you know it's going to be like five, ten events a year more or less. So that also plays mm -hmm. into it. Like I think horrific umpiring happens on the main tour as well. Um, yeah. I think sometimes sometimes people bring it up as like a you know a big sort of characteristic of the challenger tour. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I fully buy it, but certainly, yeah, just the fact that you never have the challenge system in place, it definitely adds to, you know, all the uh, all the talk about, um, yeah, line calls and about the situations. But, but yeah, all in all, uh, I think probably mostly it's just about having more events and also having such good access to uh, replays, you know, because usually... On the main tour, like I think some of these things could also like just fly by you. You know, it's an outside court match somehow sometimes, and I don't know, you might not have the access. You also might not be able to post it, right? And like for challengers, it's just super easy to make these compilations because these the footage is free to use. Um, you know, the, the footage is there on the website, it stays on the website. Mm -hmm. and it's it's probably also, you know, plays a part in how easy it is for these guys. I, I'm assuming that you know they just have like a certain group i don't know discord whatever where the, where people just notify them about you know things they might want to record and then yeah then they can produce this comp these compilations but honestly i don't even watch them anymore it's only funny for me when uh, i was at an event you know and i saw something from the stands and then to see it in a compilation that, that's that's cool <laughs> but yeah. otherwise uh, i kind of stopped watching it because after a while it's just kind of the same and well, if it's Gulpis, it's always interesting, but of course he's not playing anymore. <laughs> hey, Dan, I need yeah. to take him off my... Uh, and that's actually a good one from Sean as well. Um, there's more on the line, in a way. And uh, the same yeah. goes for like Grandstone qualifying, the reactions you see from players sometimes, you know, just they qualify for a slam and they are definitely, you know, uh, reacting to it more strongly than Elena Rybakina is the winning Wimbledon or something. But yeah, I mean, for them, it's literally... You know, career changing, life changing. Um, I guess someone like uh, Sumit Naga recently would have been a good example, right? With him having like nine hundred dollars at some point in his account, and now, uh, well, I, I'm not saying he's rich yet, but well, it's <laughs> going to be better for him at least for a while. So, like, yeah, you know, these events can really change your career. Whereas, if yeah, if you're watching a match of well, Eubanks Nagashima isn't a great example, but let's just pick a random like you know, Shevchenko Kepfer round one. Like neither of these guys is really caring about the money or the points yet. They just mostly want to get through, and it's also obviously you know massive for either of them. But it's I, I guess the stakes sometimes are actually higher. Yeah, the lower you go. Well, the streak yeah, just... has continued. Will it break here for uh, Eubanks? Oh, there's not a break for Eubanks. Eubanks is held. No, I'm saying will the streak break? Oh, the strike. Sorry, yeah, streak. What we did the same round. I just had yeah, just question. coming back to, to court three. Bolter is now a set and a breakdown. She was broken to love in the first game of the second set. Pretty mm. wayward from the Brit. Now with a mountain to climb. Um, she looks also a bit kind of, you know, she's trying to stay positive, but she's not really making many balls. Um, but uh, yeah, interesting to see how she reacts now. It wouldn't surprise me with a game like Bolters that it's going to be streaky, given how big she can play. Um, She's playing someone... Camila Georgi, though. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of day Georgie's having, though, because Georgie on a good day, um, when she's blasting the ball, um, it, it's she's always blasting the ball. She's always then, blasting. Yeah, she's always blasting the ball, but it's going okay on a good day when it's going in. I appreciate yeah. most of the time for Georgie, it's not. And I don't, and unfortunately, I think Bolton may have caught Georgie on a day where it is going in. Um, Mira Andreva, by the way, served for the set at 5 4, got broken to 15, and is in a slugfest with Voinets, um, falls over and swipes her racket on the ground, sort of on her knees. 30 all, 5 6 to Voinets. Andreva trying to serve to take it to a tie break. Um, Andreva, yeah, just 
no. trying to get into it just in a grind fest at the minute. Can't hit through Voynets, who's um not exactly got doesn't exactly have a lot of power herself. And yeah, this is turning into a frustrating time for Andreva. Uh, maybe starting to go through the first rough patch of her young career. Currently trading uh, forehand, Andreva goes up the line, backhand Voyets, backhand Andreva up the line, forehand Voyets scooped into the tram lines, and it's a point for a tie break for Andreva. Um, Nick has just switched on his radio mode. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that just happened. Uh, yeah, by the way, Shevchenko yeah. and Kepfer are in a battle, five all in the deciding set. Shevchenko serving, mm. and he holds after saving a break point or two. He's 6 5 up. In the that decided. sounds like the kind of match Damien want to watch. Shevchenko S- Kepfer? Mm, maybe. I mean, I am a bit of a Shevchenko fan, but like, also, it's a bit of a meaningless round one to me. Like, neither of these guys are going to get too far in the event, you know? And uh, I guess. But if it was a challenger match. Prefer some other matches. If it was a challenger match, sure. Also, one of these guys will play Ferran Serundolo in the second round, so they will actually have a shot at. Uh, yeah, them. I have a Shevchenko very good one. Meeting Serundolo, actually. I mean, all, both are... both these guys are probably like slight favorite, maybe over Fran yeah, right now. So uh, yeah, what's what what is happening this year? He's gonna wake up at some point. I mean, he's just gonna wake up at some point. It's Franz Rundelow, you know. He's just gonna have a um, random tournament where he peaks, and then he has another two months of not doing nothing, and then another random event where he peaks. I think he's gonna be fine. I think there's gonna be an event simply, you know, somewhat soon. Maybe Miami, which of course he's been excited at. <laughs> Um, and Keen is throwing us a lot of questions again, but yeah, basically Miller Grenier, yeah, that's the worst match of the event. Sure, obviously no one's <laughs> gonna watch it. Uh, you talked about mixed doubles. Uh, I mean, with mixed doubles, it's a different thing, right? Because you can't really promote it. It's not a tour event. It's only the slams. It's only the Olympics. So, uh, but yeah. I've actually seen it on TV. Uh, Polish TV would usually show. I don't know if they still do, but they would usually show the mixed doubles final actually. And also there was a question about next Australian to win a slam. And you posted some players who are not winning a slam. So I guess the best answer out of what you posted is a Barty return. And uh, mm-hmm. maybe the next Australian to win a slam is just someone we haven't seen yet. Or maybe it's like some young talent, like, I don't know, Hayden Jones, who, you know, for now it's very hard to tell. Like well, how good Someone who's literally just picking up a racket for the first time somewhere in Melbourne. Um, it could be. It could yeah, be. Yeah, some four-year-old. Or, um, or if Acapulco became a slam, then we'd have Demi Noor as a slam champion. <laughs> Not going to happen. But, uh, um, and Drave yeah. just lost the first set, 7-5. She had 40-30 and then hit three unforced errors. Yeah. Wait, she lost the first set, 7-5? Sorry? Did she lose the first set 7-5? Yeah. Set seven, five, yeah. So Voynets wow. has the first set 7-5. She and Doriva had 40-30 to take it to a tie break. And then basically, yeah, just hit three unforced errors. Uh, was uh, in the sense that again, very sort of pushy rallies, like not a lot of pace from either of them. And it was just that she was the first one to miss in all of them. Well, she does We've not a fan before. of playing in the desert, I guess. Um, there was Dubai where just, she looked bad. Uh, not here, Jerome. Just a quick, yeah, just a quick question for you three. Um, I don't want long answers. I just wanna won't get into it too much. But if if you had to pick one player to win the women's title this or next week, who are you who are you who are you picking? Just one name, just one name. No no explanations. No explanations. You just, just asked just Damon Shrihiri not to give you long answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I was about to say something like that. Yeah, it's not shots gonna fired, shots fired. It's not going to happen. I, mate. I know. It's not gonna happen. I know it's impossible, but uh, but yeah. I mean, well, I, okay, I go last. Okay, Iga Swiatek. Iga Swiatek. Ah, no. Okay, I'm gonna say nothing. I'm gonna say nothing. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna. Go I went with my Fiontech. heart on this one. You know that, Damien. I didn't. I'm gonna go with, I didn't go with my heart. Don't see anyone else winning, right? I mean, I, I would love a Shriantek Sabalenka final. Really Conditions honest. is all I'm gonna say. That's that's my whole exactly. Situation. Yeah, I it, it is kind of much like how it's a miracle Medvedev made the final last year. It is kind of a miracle Sabalenka also made the final last year. Um, she was, but the, she was playing really, really well at that point. Like she, she was. was yeah, I mean, she was in the form of her life, arguably. 
Um, we also had recently, we had Arena Sabalenka complaining about the court being too fast. And she had, you would know it, uh, you know. You would yeah, know it I was right. I, I mean, she told so, me that. That's true. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's true. Yeah, I mean, in your world. I'm just, I'm just throwing really it out cool. there. I was just surprised, you know, when she said that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I guess she meant in terms of the bounce. I mean, some of the balls, instead of actually bouncing, they would just skid through is what the players describe. Um, and that it's quite fast. Even Beckett said that it's like really fast compared to, you know, some of the even fast hard courts on the tour. Uh, I guess Melbourne was quick this year as well. So maybe they have, obviously they have an idea. They, they're, you know, professionals. But um yeah, I was also surprised. A lot of people were surprised by Sabalenka saying if, that. If um, she's going to struggle with how the ball bounces like that in Dubai, how is she ever going to have a hope of winning Wimbledon? <laughs> hmm, good question. I mean, she almost made the final last year. So twice. Yeah, and, like and she she won, won. Yeah. yeah, twenty-one. Yeah, she lost to Pliskova, but I I didn't think she would be, beat Pliskova. Um, oh, you were one of the few. <laughs> Most people thought she would. <laughs> Wasn't oh, like right. a free setter, and they were like very evenly yeah, matched. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a good match. It was a really good match. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I just it was pretty better than the final. I think I was terribly hungover on the day, and I was just sitting at a friend's house, and we were like sleeping through, sleeping through it basically. But yeah, I think it was good. <laughs> was that when wait Shiontek lost to Jabur, right? That's yeah, that was the she lost to Jabur in the fourth round. Right. Yeah, but at the time she was like a, a non-factor, here. really. So like you know, no one, no one looked at her going into Wimbledon. Essentially, yeah, that's true. Um, apart from maybe yeah. the the optimists, um, Chef Je- Janks, got, thanks for the update, uh, Jane, about Shevchenko going into a tiebreaker with Kopfer. Um, yeah, I'm actually uh, also I'm becoming watch a that. fan of Shevchenko. You know, I do like his tennis quite a bit, uh, but. Again, it's a it's a question of consistency now. And the thing about Shevchenko so far is like whenever he's played the top players, he's almost always turned up. Um, yeah, he can so, lose to anyone and he can beat anyone. Like he literally is yeah, so like so much up reliant uh, as well. Yeah, like you, you the, throw him against a random grinder, like I don't know, Svchina, Munar at the Australian Open, but I guess he was sick there. But surely there's a better example. I and mean, Marcello Serafini last year. And he might lose. And at the same time, you're going to give him someone like, yeah, Fritz Kachanov, who just plays at one pace, literally. And Shevchenko is going to be so good against them. So, Yeah, I remember when he played Hubi in Dubai last year in the first round. Yeah, He had a similar match to the one he had against Struff this year. Saved match points, won the third set tiebreaker. Um, and then he went 7-5 in the third to Medvedev in Madrid. Was up a break, actually, in the decider beat Holger um, in Rotterdam. So, yeah, he does turn up. And even in Dubai, he should have actually won the second set against Daniel. Um, we're going to a tiebreaker. Um, while Damien has his eyes on Eubanks, as much as he doesn't probably want to do that, uh, I will <laughs> switch. I, I to wanted Shev- to watch it. I, mean, uh, oh, right, okay. I wanted to I watch mean, it. I was actually the one who suggested this match, you know? Oh, because yeah, I just wanted to see the Nakashima return, you know, the main tour. Yeah, six six years. The mini break six back. years, six months, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's interesting when John messaged me about which ma- which matches he was thinking of doing. Um, like he was thinking of doing, we were thinking of doing Andreva versus Voyets, but um, he also suggested Kokinakis versus Giron. That was his first suggestion to me, and I was like, "I, I know really? the matches that, was were that was the one you went with." The matches he was suggesting were very weird. I mean, I, I still watched Kokinakis Giron. I was actually interested in it, but I was like, "Really, John? Like, that's that's what you want to go for?" And then I just waited for the whole schedule, and then I saw Eubanks Nakashima, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good." I mean, Stadium Court, whatever the name is, and I do want to watch it. Yeah, sure. We also have the tiebreak tense set up, by the way. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like when we have a tiebreak. We actually have like a very different lineup on the scoreboard as well. Um, so basically, mm-hmm. Nakashima is six free. Uh, well, and the, and the tie break, and that stays, of course. And then you have like seven. Have you ever watched the weakest link, for example? Yes. So in the in the final, there were these like five dots, and they were you know 
because the final is like sudden death, right? And it was like mm. like a penalty shootout, more or less. And the, when they would get a question right, it would show like tick or X. And here, instead yeah. of a tick or X, if you get a point, it gives you a, a yellow ball. And basically, there are seven dots for both players. And we are sort of waiting for that to fill up. I'm, I'm, it, I'm not sure how I feel like, about this. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I don't the... see that. It's the regular uh, scoreboard for me. I've, it covers it so here. much of the scoreboard. It covers so uh, of the scoreboard of the screen. Like it's like maybe three times as big. With oh wait, uh, that's with, for uh, the Nakashima match. Okay, for the chef. Yeah. Chico. I don't know. You, yeah. Maybe not a few feet will have it. I don't know. I I don't know what I'm watching. I'm probably watching the world feed. I don't. I've, I'm not I've, even I've got I've got the same one. Oh no, yeah, I, I see it too. Yeah, I see it for yeah. Eubanks and Nakashima. This is actually cool. I mean, I could see it being quite a fun gimmick, to be honest. I mean, I well, don't, I'm not if, if there is a if there is a Rabakina and Blinkova kind of tiebreaker, you don't want. Yeah, that. Um, but actually, but... do you see how it works now? I, I was expecting it to be like you know, if Eubanks win two points, wins two points, it's going to be like two points for him, you know, starting from the first dot and the second dot. But now it's actually like three dots Nakashima, two dots Eubanks. So what happens on the eighth point? Are they just going to sort of, you know, roll over to the next <laughs> seven points? I, I, I don't really The know. graphic will break. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they just expect it's a 7-0 for Nakashima. <laughs> uh, well, let's see how it goes. It's 3-2 Nakashima with serve according to the scoreboard. 4-2 on the scoreboard I've got. So um, it may well be this match will be over in a matter of a few points. And Kino, have seen your question. We'll probably get to it after these tie breaks, to be honest. I think that's where all the drama is happening. Um, Jerome, I assume you've given up on Bolton now. She's full love down in the second set. <laughs> Still, still watching, but mentally have given up. Yes, I mean Georgie is just she's just getting the ball back. She's not even playing, you know, lights out tennis. Um, but Bolter's just, you know, can't can't get the ball in the court. I don't know what's um, what's going on there. Not a good day for the Brits. I mean, and I doubt Murray will be able to to make make it any better later. But we'll see. Bit of standard British pessimism here on talking <laughs> tennis. Um, but Rad right, Radikan so, is still in the draw, though. <laughs> I, okay, I mean th that's the break you're choosing to be optimistic about. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, Masara uh, is a winnable match, but she's got a tough one the following round, so probably not. Uh, I can't remember who it is now, but I think it's a, I know it's a seed, and it wasn't a good seed. Um, uh, the <laughs> I don't know if I can read this out. I have to ask Vansh, but he just texted me something that you will find very funny. I have to I have to ask. Okay, ask ask if you can do that. Um okay, talk to me. Um so um sh while you're checking with Vansh, uh Shrihari, what's happening in this Shevchenko tie break? Yeah, well, I was about to tweet this graphic, but yeah, last I checked Shevchenko was five two up in the tiebreaker. Um it's, it's finished. What's oh, it's done, right? That's so quick. Seven three. Seven three. Yeah, yeah. Seven three. So Shevchenko's through to the second round. Match point, Brandon Nakashima against Chris Eubanks. Um yeah, what's gonna happen in this one? It, it Damien, it was free right? it was through yeah, it was free two in the tiebreak, and then um actually Eubanks was in the next two rallies on the Nakashima serve, but both of them were backhand chunks, like literally. <laughs> you want to so, talk us through what might be the final point of that match? Uh Vansh says that I can say it, and Vansh basically texted me, I love Chris, but he's just awful from the baseline, almost Karlovich level bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that means that's saying that to you. Karlovic uh, is I, good from the baseline. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Karlovic played a pretty similar brand of tennis, like also a sloppy forehand and at the same time, of course, does the slice. But at least he had the slice, you know? He could stay, like, relatively consistent with it. Obviously, because he had awful movement, he wouldn't ever win a point, like, you know, turning po turning defense into offense. But, you know, he could at least stay in the rally. Oh, well, it looks like... kind of can't. Where, it, so where it, is it's done now? Way. How many games since Eubanks generated a break point? Um, that must be 38. Ooh. So my Brown initial estimate, we're getting the 50. You need to tweet that stat, Damien. <laughs> I, I kind of might, but I also have to check uh, who is Nakashima playing next. because I'm That is true. Sure. 
And should I mention that or not in the tweet is the question that I have on my mind right now. It's Lechechka, okay. So it's the next gen finals rematch. Oh, that's gonna be a fascinating thing. Lechechka's not in great form at the minute. Might that might be a winnable one for Brandon. He's better than in the latter half of 2022, in my opinion. He just beat Hachanov, so I would say he's in yeah. He retired against Bublik, but he's playing some decent tennis. I mean, he, he won a title and you know, made the quarters in Dubai. I would say he's in pretty good form. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Because, like, whenever I get hyped for Lehechka, he loses. I find him quite patchy. Mm. He's always patchy. Most most yeah. tennis players are. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, most tennis players outside of the top, like, like the, the, the no, minority. No, but like him specifically, you know, with the, with the play style that he has with, yeah, just how much he goes for it. All right, let's go to Keen's question now. So, um, would you be more surprised with Kokinakis beating Sin in round two or Arnaldi beating Carlos? Definitely Kokinakis. Yeah. Arnaldi is far too good. Like, Ar Arnaldi can easily beat Alcaraz, I think. Uh, it's going to be a tough match if Arnaldi turns up. Well, Kokinakis, yeah, that's like the biggest win of his career. Maybe they they played at the US Open, right? right? Arnaldi and Alcaraz. I remember that. Yeah, match yeah. Where... Four sets, yeah. Was yeah. it four sets? I, I sort of. I think it was three. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe it was three. I mean, I just sort of got it out of my ass. Arnaldi was up a break a few times. If I'm yeah, maybe it was three. But it was a good match anyway. I mean, Arnaldi's just a good enough both. Yeah, players. six three, six three, six four. The third set, Arnaldi was up a break. Arnaldi is a good enough ball striker to beat Alcaraz on a good day. Um, he beat Fritz, Kokinakis, right? Not the Kuko? I don't know. Yeah, he beat him last oh. week. This is obviously assuming he beats Van Ash, which I think he was a, uh, which at the minute is going with serve in that first set. Yeah, Van Ash was up a break for a while. And Murray's now on court against Goffan in Stadium One. <clears throat> um, they are on court now so that oh, well at least according to the live scores of the indian world website so i'm assuming mm. that's what jerome's got his eye on now and that's well, of course I mean, trying yeah, to find that's, that's, watching georgie bolter as you say that i think bolter is you know she might find a way back in here she's got to look in um to get one of the breaks back um so i'll just stick with it for the moment uh see what happens over the next few games but there's a slight chance that Bolter gets back. You never know with Georgia, of course. She starts missing some there, balls. There's been crazier comebacks, right? We've seen people be six love, five love up and still lose love six, Precisely. seven five, six love. <laughs> Precisely. We'll see. Bolter looks mentally quite quite stable, though, so it's good signs. Uh, and Dreva is in a, still in this slugfest with Voyets, um, narrowly avoiding going down a break. Not, uh, backhand from Voyets has... Uh, get, put, moving her around at the minute and Andreva still getting the ball back though, still just looping it in, really tight angled backhand from Andreva Voyets can't do anything about it because she was so far out of court and Andreva now has a game point on my screen anyway, I appreciate I'm probably a little bit behind most people, um, so okay, so we've got me watching Andreva Voyets um, we've got Jerome sticking with Georgie Bolter Um Damien Shrihari, what are you doing tennis wise? Or are you both uh, too busy updating your social medias? <laughs> I just finished yeah, writing. Well, I'm just getting prepared for Andy Murray. Are you uh, going for Murray? Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, I want to say I'll stay for a set, but Andy Murray's one set would probably take an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> like, you're uh, in Dubai, yeah. actually. Feel like it's ridiculous o'clock in the morning for you, right? Yeah, it's 2.20. So maybe another Dude. 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Thirty minutes and then probably bounce, but um, but within thirty minutes, I think it will be like two all or something like that. Fair enough. I mean, honestly, my respect to Andy, and you know, he's a great champion. But like, <laughs> off late, it, it's been tough watching him. Man, I would say that it, it was fun yeah. watching him against Chapovalov. Uh, it, it was uh, because I mean I thought okay he's done uh, if six four four all I think it was a break point he was it was five on the tiebreaker and then he turned that around after he won the I mean he had one set point on serve he closed it out that was the first shock second is he broke 
to start the set in the decider and then he you know held on until the end granted his opponent was shapovalov so <laughs> um it hurts to say as, a, as someone who likes shapovalov so i uh, oh yeah on that i really really hope shapo can get back i mean that is i think for me even being a brit i, I don't really mind too much about andy because he's done so well i think i care too much about shapo to, to see him you know sitting outside the top 100 not playing good tennis is it's tough to see really tough to see yeah uh, i didn't enjoy the dubai match like you know watching uh another player who like really needs the win just handed to mari like this yeah um, yeah it was like it, what for I mean, what... what such matches because there was also murray and team in madrid a couple of years ago which like you don't know who you're pulling for really because both players needed to win um okay that's it's a good thing we don't have scott or anybody else here uh, i wouldn't say keen said out he's harmed his legacy i think i don't know if i'd agree with that i mean he's still a three-time grand slam champion you know but i do agree in the sense that people this might be his last their last memory of uh of murray before he goes out but i think I'm, if you if you've got any sense you you shouldn't really his legacy is not harmed he's still a, a yeah I, i i agree with you uh jerome um uh, i think you know it doesn't take away that he won three slams in his prime um and actually i would i would be even more optimistic about that first of all i think the story of him trying to come back um and doing it from this hip surgery was incredible it's probably enhanced the story of his career um as being this if you if you are a um i was going to say romantic but you're into some weird romance novels there um or uh, <laughs> you uh, uh but also you he th- let's face it most t- that's this is how most tennis players end their career um to be honest very very few go out anywhere near the top of their game agassi went out within a, about a, a year of um reaching his most recent grand slam final but he spent a year struggling on tour uh before he bowed out um sampras was unusual for kind of going no i'm done after the us open roger kind of uh carried on uh for a bit so did uh, like vavrink is still going um rafa you know is he harming his legacy by trying to do a farewell tour um or should he have just gone i'm done after that wimbledon pulling out of wimbledon um after kind of wrecking uh, wrecking himself against fritz um who knows i don't know um, man rafa says it's probably his last tournament every tournament he plays so it's just yeah. until until he hangs it up you just don't think he's going to uh, yeah but that this I is think. my point like uh, even if you look further back like john mackinroe carried on for a while like nowhere near his top level for about seven or eight, six six years um after he won yeah. uh, after his most recent slam final um no if you and Borg had uh, this awful comeback attempts when he was like 30 something right and he yeah, like never that, won a match even that's kind of a weird blip most people remember But him for no one snake. remembers that yeah no one remembers yeah. that like literally I, i'm pretty sure 99% tennis fans wouldn't know what i'm talking about Yeah, so, there, there was this one player who actually had his career best season and you know, bowed out after. That's Nick Kyrgios. No, I'm kidding. Wow. Hey, <laughs> so there you go. So I think you know that's that's my stance. Is you know you can't expect a tennis like if a tennis player stopped because they stopped being able to achieve like they they just basically called that they uh, couldn't hit their peak level at about the right time. Tennis careers would be much smaller, shorter, and they would be a lot less stubborn. I mean, I, I get what Keen is saying, maybe because um, he um, probably refers to the fact that right now there's going to be a lot of new tennis fans that only remember the last days of Murray, really, like the mm-hmm. post 2017, 18 Murray. And yeah, sure, and it's going to be the same with with Team with Vavrinka. But at the same time, I guess, you know, the examples we were throwing around kind of just show you that in the grand scheme of things in 20, 30 years, no one's going to remember that in 2023, Andy Murray won three challenger titles. Except for Damien Kust. He will be I mean, like, he will be sort of gray haired, gray moustached, telling us about the glory days. Be telling people that about that, yeah. 
I mean, he did also break a record last year. So maybe actually about that people will remember. I probably should have said, you know, that he was struggling or whatever, but I wanted to bring that in bring that up, you know, why not? I mean, anytime I can. Especially the one on clay, of course. That's that's that always deserves a mention. Yeah, one more challenger on clay. Yeah. Good on By the way, both of them are wearing orange and both of them are wearing a white cap. Can't really tell them apart if you're watching it on TV. Um, do you um, think that's a, that's an important part? Like, do, do you think that's something we yeah, should be yeah, able Let's to be honest, Damien, that's engine. probably the most important part of this match. Um, no, no, I, I, I'm just asking, you know, <laughs> if like as the whole tour, you know, should 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 there be some... Sometimes um, it has annoyed me, I think. Was it, yeah, it was the Cincinnati final between Djokovic and Murray in 2011. Like, I couldn't tell who was. Like, I, uh, if I had just tuned in, it took a while. But obviously, like, I've watched and watched both of them sufficiently for sufficiently long enough to tell them apart from their play styles. Otherwise, I mean, yeah. There's a level of but, being able to coordinate it if they've got the same clothing provider. But I'm pretty sure that Murray and Goffin have different clothing providers. Yeah, that they do. And different shades of orange too. So there you go. <laughs> Much I like the something. Okay. Shades of orange. Shades of orange to match the shades of the sand in the desert. Um. So uh, anyway, I mean, Sean's saying that maybe each player should have two kit options, but yeah, that also involves them talking to each other to go. So which one are you wearing? Just so we don't. Uh, you yeah, remember in 2016, it was the worst one. I think there was a zebra Adidas outfit. My God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ron Garros, yeah. everyone yeah. had a yeah. team for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we've always got that here on um, uh, Stadium 2 with um, Voyet. She's playing uh, with a sort of a, a black and white, um, not quite fully striped. It's not fully striped uh, tennis dress, but... Uh, it's sort of like white at the sides and around the top with sort of this black front and back. Um, and she's currently 30 or with Andreva, who's got a break 2-1 early in the set and they're into another long rally, but Voyant has just missed. Um, and we've got another question from Keen. This is basically Keen just throwing questions at us. And we're... <laughs> they're, they're good questions to be... <laughs> They're pretty, um, they're pretty good. Questions. I'm used to it because usually Keen just does it on my uh, in my DMs, so I'm used to it. But yeah, they're always they're always good, you know. They're always good. C Cressy, I mean, I, I mean, when was when when did he last play? He's been playing what? challenges. Qualifying actually. here, qualifying here. <laughs> uh, lost to Gofeu. I mean, he's only played one challenger this year in Quimper. He lost to Idukovic in the quarterfinals, but otherwise, I mean, he's actually had a very solid season so far compared to his late 2023 efforts. He's qualified for Rotterdam. Obviously, he had that great match against Felix. That was that was like his best performance in a long while. He qualified for Marseille as well. And um, actually, I think what we're seeing right now is kind of what we have to get used to with Cressy. Like, I think just as a server volleyer in the modern era, it's so hard to actually like be able to bring in results consistently. And what we're seeing right now from Cressy is fine. I just don't really see how he turns it into, yeah, like a top 30 run again. It's It just seems like a fairy tale to me. Yeah, there was a pretty big blunder made on the tennis TV graphic. You know, highest ranking of Murray, it says July 2016, where it was November, November. October yeah. or November. Yeah, it, yeah I November. think November. He, he, he was year end, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he won yeah. over Djokovic in the you know direct yeah. playoff, if you may. Yeah, I think he yeah, he got to number one in Bercy though. Yeah, he, he got after yeah. Bercy, yeah. I recently and checked that so but I yeah, know Novak like and Andy Bercy played in the too. final basically the contest for both yeah. the title and the year number one. Which is always cool when Just, that happens. Yeah, wh while we're talking about Cressy, what what has actually happened to Opelka? Do you guys know? I mean, is he is he still playing now? And he's injured. He came back for one match. He beat Tennis Sandgren, I think, in an American Challenger the last um, last season, yeah. was Las Vegas, maybe. But after that, he actually just yeah, it turned out that he's not ready, um, and okay. he is sitting out again. With um, I honestly do not remember what the injury is at this stage, but you mm -hmm. know, it was like a couple of things even. But yeah, it's like yeah. a long, long run now, of course. Yeah. 
Um, are we going? I, I've just checked the score, Jerome, and uh, is Bolter? Bolter was trying a comeback there. She had break points. Yeah, she did. She did just have a break point. Um, but I mean, yeah, again, just a really deep return, and and Georgie somehow found the corner with it. Fair play, but that's one of the probably one of the better shots she's hit in a while. Um, but yeah, I think we could be. She could be closing out here. And it looks like the losing streakers will also lose again because Pedro Kacin just got his 12th in a row to Yannick Hanfman and Shuai Zhang is also headed to a loss, which for her, it's like, what, 17 right now? No, even more, I think. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's a tough loss. Uh, I mean, I don't know 18th. what's going on. I, th I think it's going to be 18th. Well, she didn't play for like half a year, you know, after Montreal, she... She decided mm. to take a break, which I was actually advocating for in the summer. I was like, girl, I mean, yeah, just take a break. You know, you're, you're, you haven't won in ages. You're clearly not having fun on the court. That was, of course, around the whole Budapest thing where she was crying and had a panic, panic attack. So, so basically she, she did take that break. But, you know, right now she is already 35 as well. So maybe it's just going to be it for her doubles, uh, for her singles career. But, you know, doubles, she can still, certainly still be a factor. Even when she was losing all of these singles matches last year, she was still okay in doubles. Yeah, so that match has finished. Pretty big win for Georgie there. Um, not a good day for the Brits so far. That's two out from two. And we've got Murray starting as well. So will it be three from three? Let's find out. That, here we go. The torture continues for Jerome. Um, this is why I don't schedule my tennis around the Brits. Um, <laughs> I mean, the torture is going to begin now, I would say. But yeah, I think to be honest, I mean, I was going to call it after the Bolton match, and I think I still still might. So I might love you and leave you. That's fair enough. I mean, like you know, just drop off uh, whenever you want to. I mean, don't fall asleep, but um, you know. Leave the stream whenever you want. Same for you, Shahari. I mean, like you might force like um, so, Dana. So if Mario yeah. loses, then Dan Evans will be the only one left in the event, I guess. Nori. Nori. Oh, Nori. Yeah. I forgot about the seeds. Yeah, I was like, no seeds. Oh, and Raducanu as well, right? And Raducanu. Yeah. Raducanu, yeah. Yeah, yeah Dart but, fell one match short in qualifying. Same with because Dart, Barrage, they're not going to be there, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dart. Barrage didn't even enter. I think Barrage might be injured. Although this is the first I heard of it. Um, she's not played for a while. Dart, yeah, Dart, we've got um, got to the second round of qualies. I can't remember who she lost to. And then Liam Brody. Yeah, Burge must be injured because she's in the top 100, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. And then, yeah, Brody got to round two of qualies and lost to uh, Shape of the Field. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't too close to the main draw. 6-1-6-1, six, one, six, one, I think, as well. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, less than an hour. Yeah, crazy. Um, um, I mean, did, what, do we think that Schwartzman's going to go on a record-breaking losing streak, according to Keane? I think he's going to retire. Um, I think he's like five losses away from retirement. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. The guy still hasn't shown any determination, like the fact that you know he might want to like drop off the main tour, try to get much rhythm somewhere. He goes around from event to event saying the same thing, that like if things don't improve soon, I might quit. And literally, like, this year he is 1-7. and seven. And if you look at the draws that he's been getting, you kind of can't get any... can't do any better. Like, Australian mm -hmm. Open, okay, like, Kudla maybe. I mean, it, it's it's a good draw still. Ketsmanovic is not, it's not a great draw in Acapulco. But then for, like, four events, four out of five recently, he gets Buruchaga, Galan, Nava, and Puchizuki. Like, if you're getting draws like this and you're not willing to drop down to the challenger level, then what, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and... Um, Whoa. Okay. I, I I think after Ron Garros, it's very likely that he will not be playing anymore. If yeah, he, we if have both Schwartzman team as well who said that, you know, if he probably will retire if he's not moving up the ranks. Yeah. Last chance this year, yeah. So it's going to be next week for team when he comes back in Sekesh for There we go. You heard it here first. Keep an eye out for more retirement news uh, for... Uh, ATP tour, like, such it's, a uh... poignant moment that was, but yeah, keep an eye out for more retirement news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe well, some are excited about players retiring. Some, sometimes I, uh, 
I don't know if there's ever been a player like I, I hate it or something, and I wanted him or her to retire. Yeah, Probably. there are a few. I don't want to name them here, but yeah, I think you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, you, you, you do have a few, yes. You have a long way from retiring, mate. Yeah, unfortunately. Huh, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, they, they might be sort of retired, you know, forced, like, you know, they forcibly. might be forced to retire Whoa. forcibly. Uh, that possibly. Uh, I mean, around you know, May. One would hope <laughs> that losing, I mean, you know, have arguably the best chance of winning a slam since the US Open 2020. And losing from two sets up and two points away would push them to retirement, but unfortunately not. But I live with them for some more time. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna exactly. I'm gonna go exactly. both. All right, Good. Jerome, thanks for joining. Thank it's you for the pleasure you. having you on, Jerome. See you soon. We'll see you soon, guys. Take it easy. Okay. Yeah. Bye, mate. See you soon. Leave as well. So then there were three. I know I'm, I'm, hey, I'm I'm here for the long haul. I'm here to see what happens between Andreva and Voyet. Um Although at the minute Voyets has a break back point because Andreva double false at 30 all. Um, it's really not a great performance from a 16 year old, which is weird to say because you kind of expect that at this level, but it's Andreva. I know what Damien and I are both thinking. <laughs> hmm. Oh, okay, never mind. Well, the score is one thing, and Nick is kind of behind, so. Ah, wow. okay. I, I wasn't looking at the screen, honestly. I, okay. I just got completely like, yeah. Right, okay. Hey, yeah, this, this is I'm my daily struggle with it. trying to commentate is that I am always a point behind any scoreboard. <laughs> and it's got to the point where it's just, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, the rest of fair, you can, I, I'll just tell you, I've just got to the point where like, people are watching so they know what's going on. Um, So I may as well just tell you what happened and how we ended up in this place. As that's a, that is the shank of the century from Voyette, who was kind of on the back foot. Um, maybe shank is the wrong word. It came off the frame, but she was kind of leaning back. Um, no, no, that, that's a shank. Like the Andreva return kind of went straight to her forehand and she shanked it into the stand. Um, Van Ash and Arde are very close, according to Jane. Um, we're having 200 viewers, by the way, across all our platforms, which is great to see. So, um, you know, you oh, like Oh, that's it. a nice cross court exchange between Murray and Goffin, which Murray wins. Pulls the trigger on the backhand cross court. Old school Murray. Old school Murray. Yeah. Old school. Sure. Makes me wonder why he never developed an actual backhand on the line. Like, I remember everyone was talking about Murray's backhand down the line being one of his best shots when he was a lot younger. When he was younger, yeah, but he's opened up the racket face since. Uh, again, it allows really, and that that's sort of another limitation he had. Let me compare to Novak because Novak's backhand was much more versatile. Um, Andy needed, you know, that precise kind of uh, positioning and. You know, a certain kind of ball for him to really be comfortable uh, with the backhand. And Damien wasn't watching because he's having a hard time. Well, I, I didn't get what that meant. Uh, just, uh, oh, okay. I get it. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, all the all the booty calls I've gotten, yeah. Insane. Is that why you've not shaved it off yet? I, I actually went to uh, my table tennis practice yesterday and I was like, you know, expecting some reactions from people, but they were like, mm -hmm. I mean, nothing really. I remember because I, I already had a master's once for like one day and I remember that people were like very, you know, reacting to it quite a lot. But right now, suddenly they're like not. So maybe they just remember me from, from that time. I don't know. But uh, think... no one really paid that much attention to it, honestly. I think there's also a lot less judgment of men's facial hair now like as long as it's not patchy it's okay i think that's generally the rule now as, i have grown it beyond a certain point so i don't <laughs> yeah like this is kind of the best i can do but it kind of it, it kind of works for me because it means i don't need to shave so much yeah, I, 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 yeah. tremendously 
Yeah, I just I, honestly, I just you know usually have a full on beard and mustache because I just don't like yeah to shave. I mean, I just put it off for ages until I finally cannot look at myself anymore. <laughs> so there's not many tennis players who uh, continue to play with them. Um... Which, well, I mean, there's a fair few who, who play with facial hair, like Medvedev. Fine, I mean. Djokovic depends on how he's feeling, I think. These aren't. The yeah, I've noticed that Medvedev doesn't Benwapen. shave during a tournament. Um, yeah. Novak, so, I, I would always notice, I mean, especially early on in his career when he had a big match against Novak. I mean, sorry, Roger or Rafa or somebody like that, he would shave um, or a Grand Slam final. Fair. Um, and um, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a great clay court table tennis player. <laughs> Best surface, what? <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I guess it's a joke, but um, yeah. Is, to yeah. The second one, um, I honestly always struggle with that. Like, I feel like I'm a bit of a medvedev, maybe if you may. <laughs> like, a, 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 you know, somewhat all rounded, uh, but um, generally focused on countering for the most part rather than attacking myself. My attacks, like, I don't really have a strong loop, a strong you know, forehand top spin or something. So I just uh, How did you... oh, okay. kind of blast the, well, blast, yeah, the blast one shot breathe. and I end the rally like that. So, so like, yeah, like counters, uh, something like that. I move well. You're seeing yeah. two Damien's on the screen. <laughs> anyway, back to the match. Uh, yes, I mean the the match we're going. I'm just going through. Andreva's just broken again. Um, again, just grinding it out. Um, when she's being patient, she, and wait, that Voyet is making the errors, but sometimes Andreva is losing patience, um, or either she's losing patience or she's struggling to maintain the consistency needed to win this grind fest which is which is what's happening right now this could be a very long one um as could also the murray goffan match which is what shrihari is keeping an eye on it's so it's one game yeah well and he had a break point goffan raised it and it's one all that does not surprise me van ashen and aldi into a tie break in the first set um and draver and collins erica and draver that is are on have now started warming up on stadium three um and uh yeah i think that's kind of the main thing it's like if you're a marajan fan he's just started against rodionov um all right uh speaking of marajan he was supposed to play popular who withdrew yeah so rodionov is taking his spot yeah. sumit nagar the unlucky guy who uh, did not get in at least not yet waiting waiting to see who else might withdraw Yeah, another thing with Sumit Naga is like he's just so far behind the rest of the top hundred in terms of fitness. Like, you know, he's just a set or two, and then he's gassed. Hmm. Yeah, that was the case at least in this match against Sonego. I mean, the Australian Open match against Bublik was an outlier, in my opinion. But um, like all the qualifying that he played there, all the challenger action in February. Mm, yeah, he got a wild card into Dubai, so there was no qualifying. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, all the other events he played. I don't really know if his yeah, fitness was ever really... Well, it was questioned yeah. in the second week. Um, what was the second week event? Not Chen? No, no. Uh, Bengaluru, I guess. Um, it was questioned there, of course, but that was when he was trying to go for back to back titles, so like that was you know, that was fine. But he still played three matches, he was he only really ran out of it against uh Napolitano. Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, he's not gonna be winning on the main tour too much. I mean, he can win sometimes, but I, I think I, that's the, the expectation, right? You might that anyone in the top 100 might win the odd match. Um, but yeah, so it, it's like it's a, about yeah, just getting even further. And of course, Nagal will actually get a better ranking, I think, because he defends nothing until the end of April. So there is that big spot for him right now to, to still climb. I just wonder if he's going to be winning matches regularly, and I don't really see it. But but well, um, he's earned himself the chance, obviously. So, uh, Damien, which match are you keeping an eye on at the minute? Or are you not bothering? Right 
Yeah, I know. Maybe a little surprising, but nothing I, else. I am surprised really... given your comments about Andy Murray in the past. Yeah, I want to see Gofo, uh mostly. I, I am. I nothing else really excites me for the time being. Um, Andreeva Volinets, like, yeah, it's just Volinets is tough to watch, honestly. So I, I'm, I'm not. Oh, not if I really want to this it. question, I want to say that the fact that uh, you know the members of the audience supposed to be quiet during points. I think it adds more to the tension and build up during the points and then after uh, the points are done, especially, you know, towards the tail end of a match or, you know, I, deciding I can, that. I completely agree, Shahiri. I think yeah. that's what it's it, like. It, that's what tennis has become. It's this beautiful atmosphere of, of tension that you get um, that you don't really get in pretty much any other sport. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, when doing football, you have matches going past extra time and where, you know, th there are people moving around, there's noise, but at the same time, it, tennis is unique in that way. So I wouldn't change. Yeah. In football, there's like so much constant noise all the time. And like, you don't actually hear it when you're on the pitch. I mean, I would imagine, you know, the, the biggest match I've played in my life in football, so probably in front of 10 people. But, you know, I, I would imagine you don't really, uh, you know, you don't really hear any in, in individual, like, aspects of this noise. Like, it's just this huge wall of sound, really. And in tennis, it kind of wouldn't work like this because it's, like, also so so much more compact as well. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think this would really work for tennis. Like, when it comes yeah. to people walking in the stands, especially when it's not behind the players, especially when it's, like, super high up, yeah, I mean, of course, that that actually does nothing to the players. But like, just noise randomly. Uh, I don't know if. That yeah, actually... I agree with that. But that rule is quite archaic as well because. Yeah. You have in the beginning of a set, like you know, if you want to get into the stadium, you have to wait three games. That I think is ridiculous. Um, it is. Um, also, yeah, but... that's what I think, and also in between, regardless. I mean, let's say. You have people waiting to enter uh, this stadium when and there's a long game going on, multiple juices. It's just, you know, it's unfair to them that they won't catch any of that action. I mean, I, I don't think the players are even even distracted remotely by just, you know, members of the audience like going and getting their seats. Speaking of long games, um, Van Ash has just saved set point in the opening set tiebreak against Arnaldi. It's six all. Uh, Jane obviously has no when it was set point to Arnaldi, but yeah, they're mid rally now. Points. And are you watching that one or are you just watching? Yeah, the score? I'm watching that one. Okay, uh, both players are trading cross court backhand from Arnaldi, uh, backhand from Van Ash. Drop shot from Arnaldi. Uh, Arnaldi. Well, Van Ash misses the backhand. Yeah, and okay, Arnaldi so is just point. egging the crowd on. Um, he has another set point. That's actually a good drop shot, but I think Van Ash could have made it, but you know, the backhand flipped the net, landed out. So. Arnaldi has another set point. But this time it's on Van Ash's surf. Interesting. Um, okay, well, bring us up to date updates on that. I think Arnaldi's probably going to keep that crowd support going uh, if he's going to play Carlos, because that atmosphere could be quite electric if there's people supporting both sides. Yeah. Second surf for Van Ash. It's a double fault. And oh, now you take a first set. Ouch. Where, where are we at with um, Van Ash? I don't think I've ever seen him play, but he's. I don't think I've ever sat and watched him play a match. Um, but he's He took a set of Novak uh, at Banya Luka last year. He's not good enough for the main tour. Not yet, at least. <laughs> oh, he's top 100 age 19. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not yet, at least. But, like, the guy is winning, yeah, like, what, 30% matches? Something like that. No, I mean, let's be honest. Like, when, for example, Dubai was a great example. When um, Popirin, as well, was supposed to play. 
and he withdraws. Yeah. And then you have Kachanov against Van Asch, and like there's no point in tuning into this match because Van Asch just has, you know. To be no, fair, actually, Van Asch was 3 1 up in the second set, but he lost five straight games from that. So. Yeah, and he lost like 6 2, 6 3. I mean, yeah, whatever. I, yeah, he's just he's just not. I mean, he, he gets the occasional win, yes, but for now, um, he's going to kind of sort of yeah play to stick around in the top 100, which is a great achievement at 19. But um, mm. am I, am, am oh, I really supposed 19? to be excited? Okay. Yeah, he's nineteen. He's one of he's he's one of Fran France's big tennis hopes along with Arthur Fies. Mm. Yeah, except one is actually a hope. <laughs> and <one> is... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, of course, I'm I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit. I, I'm just saying there's you know there's still a ton of development required, and like it's so hard to be lightweight and make it in modern tennis as well, especially modern like the past five ten years. It's it's very tough to do it. Almost everyone hits a big ball right now, and yeah, um, yeah. I I just don't know. I mean, f for now, he really just gets the occasional main tour win, and there's nothing more that he can really do against the top guys either. And um, well, um, he is one of the weakest top 100 players right now for me. I think when you when you uh, enter a main tour draw, you want to get him. So we want to avoid a Nagal versus Van Ash match. I think Sumit would be the favorite. Yeah. On most in most conditions at least. Um by the way, Andreva's missed three opportunities to take this set. Um that third one missed with a backhand up the line that she tried to go for a winner on and just missed um on the uh just went wide. So they're into another another long, grueling rally. This match has been going on for an hour and forty five minutes. Um, this is going to be a very, very tough one at the minute. And maybe, I know John's backing Andreva to go uh, do well, but if she's playing like this, she's going to struggle. She might be better off if she faces, like, maybe not a Sabalenka or a Rybakina, but, like, someone who, yeah, just stays on top of the point a little bit more than Volinets. Yeah, I think with the, the thing is, Volinets kind of, because she she's kind of forcing Andreva to play the extra shot and yeah. hit bigger than maybe she's able to right now. Yeah. Um, which I mean, you know, I haven't even seen the match, but that, that, that's like you know that's exactly what I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, and and don't get me wrong, like Andreva can hit the ball, but it's not as hard as most people in the uh, I think uh, a, a lot of other women in the top one hundred. Um, and but I'm not expecting that to necessarily stay the same as she as she grows older. I think yeah. she, she should be. For able now, to she's that. vulnerable to players like Volinets. I think, yeah. So it's it, it it's really fine, you know, for for her to kind of struggle here and then maybe, well, if she gets through, of course, play better in a matchup that would suit her more, like the Ons Jaber matchup that she could uh, actually be in in the second round. Yeah, you could end up with a similar situation where she went like that when she went to love up in head to head with Krajikova. Similar thing with Ons. Well, like so Andy Murray <laughs> just held for three two. I was not very far off my prediction. I thought okay, it would be two all by the time I'd have to go. But anyway, it was a pleasure uh, being on the stream with both of you. I hope to see you soon. And, uh, see you soon, Shahiri. Thanks for coming on. Same mate, same mate. See ya. Yeah. And then there were two. Um, one watching the DTP, one watching the WTA, which is what we originally thought the stream was going to be until it's a we good had combo, yeah. It's a good combo, which is nice. Uh, and I do get what Srihari meant about the orange shirts. I mean, they are very distinctly like different types of orange. However, um, just a couple of game, a couple of minutes ago, Mare missed this backhand cross court, and I was like, ah, Gofan, what are you doing? And then I see that the point went to Gofan. And I was very confused for a moment. I didn't know Hugo Delian had a brother. Yeah, Murkel, he was in college. And, uh, well, he's like four or three years younger than Hugo Delian. I did watch the Battle of the Delian Brothers. Yes, that was, I think, at night yesterday. And I kind of like woke up for it uh, somewhat randomly. Uh, and I did watch it. 
And um, Murker was actually a lot better. Murker was like the livelier player, lots more pop on the forehand. Of course, he doesn't have the same sort of pinpoint accuracy of uh, Ugo's the game. But like for Ugo, it only really works when he's playing well, right? When he has the confidence, when he is uh, sort of on top of his game. Otherwise, he just wasn't like disciplined enough. I don't know if the whole brother versus brother thing actually um, played into it at all or not. But Murkel is actually 20 and 4 for the year now. So um, he is he's really doing extremely well this time. And um, I am surprised you are not watching the Almeida Sakamoto. Yeah, to be honest with you, the whole Santa Cruz lineup today just didn't really get me going at all. So I'm perfectly fine sitting here. Unless Prado Angelo uh, is actually going to make it against, like, make it, make it a competitive match against Hugo Carabelli, then I'm also going to start watching that for sure. I don't know if I quite buy it, but I also haven't watched Prado Angelo really since the Ron Garros final last year. So, uh, well, my, my knowledge on him might be a little outdated. Uh, and if Damien's knowledge on someone is outdated, then, um, you know, that's. Uh, clearly, information that that is uh, shocking to hear. Maybe uh, he needs to have a, uh, a a stronger resume. Yeah, they they need to start playing on the challenger tour more. And to be fair, I mean, with the with, with the junior rank with the junior accelerator spots, he probably will be. So uh, there's gonna be a Prado and Hello match that I will watch in the near future. I would assume. And he actually had his birthday yesterday. Well, sorry, it's midnight. So is it? Is it still? Yeah, actually, he had his birthday just a minute ago for me. So I guess for him in Bolivia, that's still his birthday. So happy his birthday, birthday to him. him. Yeah. Happy birthday, Mr. Dalian. Uh, no, no, no. Juan Carlos Prado Angelo. The, uh, well, happy uh, birthday to whoever that guy is. The Round Garros 2023 boys singles runner up. Damon, you know I don't pay attention to junior finals. <laughs> But I'm, I'm just, you know, just telling you. <laughs> no. I, I know by now, yes, I know by now. Who was it that I was, like, outraged that you did it? That you oh, it was Fonseca. I hadn't uh, realized he was a junior that, champion. Uh, yeah, that you, that you uh, haven't heard of him, yeah. That, that was who I was outraged by, sure. Yeah. Although, I, you know, I felt vindicated because I ended up recording Ground Pass with Anastasia and uh, her attitude to junior finals is similar to mine in that, you know... It, I think it's similar to all of us in that it's not necessarily the most representative of who's going to be big. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we had a whole discussion on it right, yeah. recently that uh, it's kind of like more of an eye test thing rather than actual junior results. Yeah. Of course, the eye test might be wrong as well. <laughs> in yeah. fact, how, it often is. <laughs> how, how many, like, let's face it, like, eye test, Ernest Gulbis, new goat. Oh, one Roman yeah. Garrison in final, never mind. <laughs> You know, it's still a career, though. Like, it's still a top oh, 10 still ranking. Career. It's still six titles. It's still a semi final. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Today, I was talking with, um, actually, with a couple of friends about uh, some players from like 2000, the 2000s, really, and like how to compare them against the current top guys. And honestly, some of the opinions that I have right now about them, like players, well, th there are basically, there are so many players who just kind of have one or two peak years and then they do nothing for the rest of their careers i mean they remain part of the tour but you know they're nothing to write home about and in, in that sense actually this era of tennis that you know what we have right now on the ATP, that was all atp by the way related not the wta but like the whole atp landscape right now is just so much more consistent as much as guys like rude or rublev they might not be the most exciting to watch for me i mean they are so much better if you think about it than guys like i don't know lubicic robredo you know, Blake, yeah. the the mid two thousand, yeah, because yeah, like they go hot for a year and then disappear. Yeah, like all of them, really. I was shocked to learn recently that James Blake only had one ATP Finals appearance, and it's mostly probably because of the fact that that appearance was memorable and he actually made the final. But still, like that was kind of like really. I mean, it's impossible. And I just checked today, and he was like, you know, and that I think he had another top ten finish had one at 13 but otherwise like he wasn't a proper you know top player and right now we have actually have atp finals lineups where if you if you look at them at the end of the year you're really unsure who's gonna like leave it for next season like all of them just seem like they're, they're probably gonna make it and it's a very different change whether that's good or not whether that's more exciting or less exciting that is very subjective but it's kind of you know you know, beyond subjective in terms of, yeah, these players are actually 
well, if not better, then they are actually just just have a lot more staying power, let's say, at the top yeah. than uh, than these ones in the in the two thousands. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and like you know, not even like the top eight. You know, you could go further down, like top twelve. Um, yeah, Dimitrov, Skachanos, and and the likes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to say full top sixteen, but um, oh my gosh, Andreeva's being absolutely shocking in this game that she's trying to serve this match out, serve the set out. She's hit a drop shot that didn't even even look like going through the net, and then two sort of very flat shots into the net, and it's giving Voynets break points. Which, um, um, yeah, I know, I know, the scoreboard's ahead of me. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to say that. Keen was basically asking about Brower, so he's like a big lefty server, but from off the ground, he actually kind of grinds and finds good angles and counter punches. He's he's a well, I don't want to say he's an interesting mix because yeah, I don't think I don't find him that fun to watch. But he's an interesting mix in terms of the play style being kind of unique, like a big serve lefty grinder. Um, I don't know if we really have any other anyone else like that on the tour, really, especially lefty fast cards. Yeah, like yeah. last a big serve, but then you actually play pretty defensive or like you know at least counter punching tennis of the ground. Yeah, because all the other players I can think of. I mean, Medvedev the ultimate example of this. Yeah, are right. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to find someone like that. Yeah. It, it's Most definitely... of the lefties are aggressive. Maybe Jack Draper actually saw sometimes. <laughs> and... You know, he's work. got some aggressive shots in there as well. Um, well Brower I mean, kind of has too, right? But but yeah, I mean, Draper is actually a, a fairly solid comparison, I would say. Okay. Yeah, I've probably probably fair enough. Again. I've not really watched much of Brower, but I've I've seen little bits of uh, Draper uh, every so often. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Um, I think for me, Draper is not someone I'm getting excited about until he's cons until he's consistently managing to stay fit. Um, otherwise, as a Brit, you're just going to get your hopes up all the time. Um, but that's uh, that's neither here nor there. But like, actually, I was going to ask you about the the big serving counter punching uh, style that you uh -huh. just described. That's quite a recent development, isn't it? I can't think of anyone before. Medvedev or Zverev or Hachanov, <laughs> where we're not Hachanov yeah. didn't have a good serve, but you know what I mean. Um, doesn't really yeah. like that wasn't really a thing before 2017. Yeah, because no one could move. Like if you were above a certain height, no one could actually move well enough to pull something like that off. Like I, I think literally people were also like you know discouraged by from playing that sort of play style if they were um, above a certain height. Um, Jan Hoinski being a great example. For example, uh, well, great example. For example, uh, being a great example, since like yeah, it was just believed that you can't if you are, let's say, I don't know, um, six foot four or something, you just can't play defensive tennis, and you kind of couldn't. But well, of course, right now people, sportsmen, uh, in every really discipline, in every sport, they are moving so much better than in the past. The technology has improved. The knowledge has improved. The science has improved uh, the you know the recovery process and everything and uh yeah it was just impossible to to be like medvedev zverev hurkacz back in the day but but now it's super common actually <laughs> now it's kind of the meta um yeah it, i think we're both watching grind fests by the way um because uh, obviously it's 4-3 after 31 minutes marika fan um Barry looks like he might be having some opportunities. Um, on my screen, I think, well, um, I know Andreva is going to miss this break point, but um, it's interesting when she's trying to play Voynets at her own game by keeping it short and forcing Voynets to try and, and generate, it's working. Apart from that shot there where Voynets actually did hit a decent forehand up the line. Um, but um, it's when Andreva feels like she has to try and finish the point like she was when she was trying to serve the set out and like, convert set points that it's it's where it's going wrong for her at the minute but yeah. like when she's the one trying to force violence to generate it's actually going better for her yeah which makes total sense with what we know of andreeva so far sort of in her yeah in her career right i mean this is the type of player that she might struggle against despite being you know so much 
better <laughs> in all aspects of the game, really. Uh, Marina with three breakpoints, uh, kind of random. Uh, just, just a pretty decent return, but I don't know if Gofan had to like, you know, make that sort of an error. The previous one was uh, just also like a pretty random point with Gofan just um, hitting this shot that was way shorter than Mari expected. Mari barely picked it up, and then Gofan actually, you know, put him into a tricky position with the volley, and now Gofan misses the backhand as well. He recently couldn't beat Alex de Minor. Um He was like zero six against him. Mari, he's zero and seven. So let's see as Mari now breaks to love. And um, another thing that I was actually um, sort of similar to that 2000s and right now discussion, I was just thinking about it the last couple of days, how Juan Martin del Potro should have won more slams. Because if you if you think about it, like players like Ferrer, Verdict, Songa, I'm not actually sure if we throw him in, if you throw them into this era of tennis, if you throw them into the current group of top players, I'm not actually sure they would be winning as much as people think. Like Ferrer, you know, he wasn't actually that special of a ball striker. Like I think he would lose to most of the top players generally. Uh, Berdik, you've got like a very stiff player, you know, barely no, barely any athleticism really. And and the big, and the serve also was kind of underused despite being such a clean ball striker. And then you have Tsonga with no backhand, no return really. And uh, then if you think about it, like Del Potro was the only one who kind of had it all. Like he, he really had zero weaknesses other than being a glass cannon. And um, I, I was just thinking about that basically, that he's like the only guy from that, uh, let's say second tier after the big four that I would like now confidently say that if they play today and if they are healthy, they're winning a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think Ferrer would still do all right because Ferrer still beat everyone else. I think his style is very similar to Rublev, um, very yeah. sort of consistent striker, and Rublev does all right. Um, other players, like there's other consistent people who do pretty well off. Yeah, but I'm like thinking team. of winning big titles, you know, and winning some. Oh, okay. Like, rather, than, rather than, yeah, j just doing the same like he did in the previous era. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, in which case, yeah, I'd agree. I think he'd they, they would still struggle to win slams in the current era. Um, uh, still might get the odd 1,000, um, I think. I think there was that was still a possibility, and I think they all won 1,000s, didn't they? Um uh, Berdik did, 2005, Tsonga did, Ferrer did, yeah, yeah, Ferrer, Ferrer yeah. won, uh, Tsonga too, yeah. Yeah, but you're right, Del Potro did have it all, like, but I, I don't know if he should have won more slams. I think he had an opportunity, a few opportunities to win more than he did, but there was always a big four, big three or four player in the way, usually big three, um, I can't think of a slam where Del Potro had an opportunity to win it, um, where it was one of the ones where like a Vavrinka or a Chilich won it. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't one, yeah. 2018, of course, he made the final at the US Open, but um, he wasn't really close to Djokovic in that match. So I don't know if there was like a, yeah, chance. How did he, was, how did he do in the 2016, no, 2016 US Open? Did he lose to Vavrinka in the quarters? That was the one when he just came back and kind of, I don't know where he made the quarters. I don't remember how the match went, but I don't think he was close to winning it, right? Yeah, um, but that was the year where he got, he, he just got to the silver medal at the Olympics. He'd beaten yeah. Rafa and Novak in the draw and had a bit of a grind match in the final with Andy. Yeah, and then beat Andy as well in the Davis Cup. Um, Which was after the US Open. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I'm thinking of a Wim of that Wimbledon also when he lost to Novak in five. 2013, like yeah. So he would have been yeah. dominated by Andy in the final. That would have been a very interesting final. That's not unwinnable, yeah. It's I mean, not I'm pr no. pretty sure he would have done better than Novak on the day. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I mean, he, he didn't have a proper chance other than the, the one that he won, yeah. That's that's for sure. Yeah, he he maximizes opportunities. I mean, I mean to be honest, as a Federer fan, I find that loss frustrating for Roger. But you can't argue with that. Del Potro had an amazing day that day in that final. Yeah, but you didn't need to like keep peppering the forehand, and for some reason, you know, Federer did that a few times. Like when he just sort of went against a player with a big forehand, he kind of kept going at their forehand. <laughs> Um, was that, you know, I don't know, trying to show that yours is actually superior? Was that 
just sort of thinking, no, he can't keep it up for the whole for the entire match. I don't know, but it did make him, you know, lose it was a few times. One of the most bizarre tactical performances I've ever seen from Roger. That, yeah. That fight. So, um, especially as earlier that year, he actually won six three six love six love against Delpo at the Australian Open, and um, well, I, I, I get it. Yeah. It's definitely a bit of an opportunity missed for him. He had like some some break points as well. I think that were quite crucial. Yeah. But um, yeah, is that but by the way again. Kirsten Flipkens in the Goffin box? I would assume. Uh, I don't know if this is a. I don't know if this is like a consistent thing or not. There's this other guy whom I know, like from you know, I, well, I know. I don't know him personally, but I've seen him before in the Goffin box. He's his coach that whose name I don't remember now, but also there's a woman who has sunglasses on. And that already kind of tells you that, you know, a lot of signs point to it being Kirsten Flipkens. <laughs> Not that she's the only only person in the world watching, uh, you know, wearing sunglasses, but if that person is sitting in the box of a Belgian player, then it's likely her. <laughs> also, she wore sunglasses a lot, even as a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like sunglasses plus Belgium kind of tells me it's it, it's probably her. Mira Andreev is really in trouble now. I mean, she she had opportunities in that last service game with Voyets, didn't take them. Voyets is uh, Andreev is having to stay in this match of five seven five six fifteen all on my screen. Is she just going to get frustrated into a defeat here? It's looking very possible. That's a bizarre zoom on the camera there. Some camera operator fell asleep for a moment. Don't know how they managed to do that with this rally. Um, that can, well, having said that, there's very slow rally. Um, somehow that moon ball lands in the court. And it's just these moon balls are landing right by the baseline from Vonnet. And eventually that shoulder high forehand ends up in the net from Andreva, who is now two points away from defeat. You know what's another chance for... Del Potro to win a slam against Federer at the French, like when he loses to him in five in 2009. Yeah, was he not in? I think he was injured during that match, Del Potro. Was that? No, that was a different French Open match. No, that's 2012, right? Yeah, that's 2012. Something, but yeah, the the first one, like he he wins that one and he has a very real shot, but I guess it's it's even pre US Open, so it would have been even. Like it would have changed his the the tri- the course of his career even more. That would have been a very nervy final, Del Potro versus Sodling. Yeah. Um. Who? Yes. In- interesting that Sodling, despite his game style, seemed to be at his best at Roland Garros. <laughs> very unfortunate. His career suddenly ended in the way that it did. Match point, Voyets. Match point Voyets. Um, so we might be wrapping up soon. Um, Murray's got the first set, 6 3, um, which is good news for Murray fans. Probably means he's about to lose. Um, but uh, it's match point for Voyets. Serve from Andreva. Forehand and play from Voyets. Forehand Andreva up the line. Backhand Voyets to mid court. Andreva again, just hitting the backhand of um, Voyets. Very safe. Very, like, no one's going for depth at the minute. Very sort of loopy balls, sort of sitting up, ready to be struck. Really slow court of Indian Wells showing itself here. Backhand moon ball from Andreva. Forehand moon ball up the line from Voynets. Cross court Andreva. Cross court Voynets. Cross court Andreva. Forehand to forehand. Now Voynets has changed direction. The backhand up the line. Forehand Voynets cross court short. Forehand Andreva. Voynets goes cross court again. Andreva has to go up the line. She misses it completely. And Voynets celebrates. She wins 7-5, seven, 7-5. Five, seven, five. The wild card gets through. Andreva is in tears, walking to the net, clearly frustrated with how this day went. A winnable match maybe later on in her career, but as her game is right now, not really. And Voynets looks absolutely overjoyed. Andreva is sobbing at the minute, bitterly, bitterly disappointed with how that match went for her. Uh, But Voynets just refused to budge, and that's how she won that match. Oh, Goffin is also having a horrible day at the office. Yeah, with with Andreeva, I'm I'm kind of like um, it's it's kind of funny how like I feel like I have a very good grasp of how the match went, because well, what I was thinking about it pre-match, then you pretty much said as well during it. So you know, 
I kind of feel like I know what happened, even though I never saw a point from it. It but, progressed yeah. exactly as you predicted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be a loss still for Andreeva, but like I was, I was thinking that this is actually like you know not the ideal type of opponent. Like it could be a bit of a slog. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a six. It's a very sixteen-year-old loss to to go out mm. to Volinets, I think. And. Um, well, what can you do? There was this one uh, prediction because um, I was talking about this on the on the draw preview show that we did th- this morning. But um, tennis.com, I think, posted this like roundtable predictions or whatever, and there were nine nine experts telling mm-hmm. us who is going to win, who is going to make the final, tra la la, on the um, ATP and, and WTA uh, Indian Wells draw. And um, I mentioned that because out of nine play nine people there. Free peaked Coco Goff as their winner, and that was why I mentioned it because I said that wow, I mean, that's clearly you know very American of them. But also, one person did go for an Andreeva Goff final, and I also mentioned that, that was because optimistic. that was kind of like, yeah, wishful thinking for sure. Although, honestly, looking at Mirra's draw, I was also like, yeah, I mean, she, she definitely has a possibility for a good run here. Yeah, it would involve eager going out early, but yes. I, I mean, that run would have her like playing like where where would they play like the quarterfinals quarters. or something? Quarters. Yeah. So basically, that that's what I was thinking of. You know, that she's one of the mm. contenders for a quarterfinal spot, and we actually yeah. still haven't seen Andrea Vashvontek, of course, which would be a big no. story. And I don't know how competitive that match would be with Andrea's game the way it is right now. It's good, but it's 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 there's it, there's a clear limit to it. Um, we see it whenever she plays Sabalenka. Um, yeah, but you guys a little better for these players that struggle with Sabalenka or Rybakina, like I don't know, Kim you know. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be better because Iga doesn't like overwhelm you right away with just pace on both wings, really. Uh, so, so you look. It might not be more competitive in terms of the scoreline, but it's gonna look better. Like it's gonna be. You know, yeah. You're gonna feel like you're in the match at least. Whereas I, I, Solenka, you're not. I, I think Andreeva would probably be shocked by what she gets hit by if Eeg is having a good day. Um, but anyway, um, it's not gonna happen. Not yet, anyway. Um, like not in uh, not in Indian Wells 2024 because Mira Andreeva is out. Erica Andreeva was a breakup against Danielle Collins in their match, where Collins has broken back and got it up to three all. Um, and Wozniacki is about to start against, is, is up next on Stadium 2 against Su Lin. Uh, and yeah, there's Murray. Murray's already a breakup in the second set. Uh, but yeah, I think we're not here necessarily to cover Murray. I think maybe... Uh, yeah, maybe we should cause one. But I was, I was going to actually before I said, you know, you talked about three of them predicting Coco Goff. I don't think Coco Goff in, winning Indian Wells is that crazy. No, but it's not. You're not going to go for it, like you know. No, I mean, there's a big gap between the big three and her. No, I could see her beating Sabalenka on the surface in this in, in Indian Wells, and then really depends on how the rest of the draw pans out. Um. <laughs> I and you know she's not lost in the US since Miami last year, so no, I don't think it's that crazy. I think Goff is the contender here. I mean, I don't know, just three out of nine picking her is insane to me. Like I, 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 just... I, I nearly went for her to win it, but I decided that it would be crazy to suggest that she'd be eager. I guess I just like you know. Um... Hmm. I'm struggling to find a word that's not a that's not a swear word, but I I just like uh, basically pointing out Americans going for Americans and <laughs> oh yeah, just being you know American. They, there's definitely that motivation happening there where mm. the Americans are trying to hype up their own um, to win a home tournament because you know let's face it, more people might watch if they think they're gonna cheer for America. America. Yeah. Um, no, Radicana tomorrow, Nerlan. Um, as is Osaka and Nadal. Is playing yeah, Kinder, Kinder was that story about Del Potro. In fact, it was like his father or something that lost nearly all that money. So, yeah, it, it was pretty brutal. Yes. 
Is that a forehand winner from Andy Murray to close that game out? That's um It is, but the court was fully open. <laughs> <laughs> No, like David David Goffin was basically. I don't know. Did, did you see it or did you just? Uh... I did see it. Yeah. No, I've watched it. Ah, so you I, I, it. I've okay. got. I've switched to the match. Yeah. I know because I, because I was I was like, why would you know that it's a forehand winner if you didn't see it? But like Goffin was not even in the court, right? I mean, Goffin was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not. A, it's definitely not a good day for Goffin at the minute, from the looks of it. Um, yeah. I wasn't. Going, I was going to go to bed after this, but I might. So if see, I think I might see how the second set. Um, yeah, we might ju- we might just do it. Honestly, I mean, so, for some reason, there's a lot of people watching, <laughs> so we yeah. might just try to finish I mean, up Mario yeah, Goffin yeah. as well. Most of these people are watching from X, actually, which is interesting. Um, so welcome, also welcome to you, those of you who are on YouTube and Twitch. Um, the but, same uh, was yes, it was uh, this morning, you know, when we were doing the the draw preview. Uh, there were there were like maybe yeah, almost two hundred people watching the entire no uh, maybe maybe no it was maybe it was actually yeah almost a hundred maybe watching the entire time something like that I I didn't check then from where they were but since now the breakdown is like that I would assume that it's the same it's interesting I don't know maybe they changed something in the algorithm of showing these streams have you ever watched a stream on X so far on Twitter actually please stop saying X. <laughs> <laughs> I have not actually uh, watched a stream on Twitter. Yeah, me either. Um, like, uh, why would I want to have YouTube? Um, I I just wanted to say um, to Keen and like talking about Arthur Ferry, um, like his career high is two hundred and sixty eight, um, as far as I'm aware, and he's twenty one. As far as I'm concerned, if you haven't broken top 200 by the time you're 21, I don't think you're that great a prospect. Um, and um, whoa, yeah, um, like you might you might break top 100 at some point in your career, but I don't see you winning anything big. You might get um, like you'll be a good tennis, but it's, like, you're still a good player. But I'm not going to necessarily call you. I'm like, hasn't played professionally like barely you know he was in college and stanford and now he's injured actually he played at the beginning of the season he played one singles event two in doubles and he just got injured ahead of his semi-final match with Valentin Vashro, and he hasn't been on the court since so it's um, likely that his season will be kind of lost but like you know surely it's different with college players i mean kamori well, for example i didn't know he was in college yeah um and unless I bother to do the research beyond that, I'm not going to find that out. Um, but also, uh, and that's that's on me. But I would also say that I'm not also like I I'm not particularly bothered if someone's British. Like, like it's use it's it's it might be nice sometimes, but uh, I'm not going to support someone just because they're British. It's the same reason why I don't. Since I'm not hyped about Draper in the same way. Um, although Draper is different. Draper is, I see the talent, I see the potential, but I don't, I'm refusing to invest anything in him until he can show me he doesn't get injured for, he can last three months without getting injured or six months. Um, so uh, that's that's where I stand at. That's going to be his biggest limitation. And that's not necessarily his fault, um, but he, yeah, that's where I'm at with with anything and you know i will support someone based on do i like how they play tennis and i don't care which country they're from i mean yeah of course i'm very much like that as well and you know that extends also to like personality and of the court stuff too i, I mean I, i'm just you know i just look at if i like watching the player i don't care about anything else really although of course especially if there's like some personal experiences they can impact my uh yeah. Especially the likelihood of me, yeah, just rooting for someone. Um, this is very random, by the way, but you know, we are talking about nationality today. I watched this horrible video today. Uh, I was just sitting, I don't know, waiting around for something, and I started scrolling through Facebook, and I watched this really awful thing. And in in Poland, um, a couple of poles uh, they got into a Uber, and um, basically the the guy who was driving was ukrainian and they started like talking you know some some horrible stuff to him really the guy was just sitting there and tried to do the you know tried basically to to get to get them to their destination 
and then they stop at the, at a red light and suddenly this one guy because one guy was sitting at the front and he was also drinking a beer despite the driver telling him that he, well in the back it's there's more space or something like that because he didn't want him sitting at the front and that he also can't drink can't be drinking that beer and then the guy just slaps him on the face like his glasses fall off and they basically started saying something about stealing the car and there's just you know uh yeah beating him outside the, the outside the car or something but the guy found some pepper spray opened the door and started just screaming in Ru russian or ukrainian i don't even know for help and uh after a while after he like pepper sprayed the car like three times they finally left and the guy just drove away and uh well for one thing like that was really a shocking watch for uh, another, like I started reading the comments and the amount of people on Facebook that uh, were sort of like, yeah, I mean, why do Ukrainians come here and we spend so much money on them and, and stuff? I mean, and and that they like, you know, are Ukra Ukrainizing Poland or something like that. I mean, wow. I mean, honestly, I live in the country too and I like barely spot any people from, you know, abroad from Ukraine. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, yeah, it's, it was it was a horrific experience to to watch that, and especially to start reading the comments and realize how many people actually, you know, agree with what these drunk idiots were saying. Um, of course, it's really neither here nor there, but you know, it's just something about nationalistic approaches and stuff. Um, yeah, I just I just don't really get that, and especially funny to me was like this one comment that said that. Um, he that they don't deserve to be there, uh, but he but he deserves to be there. And like someone someone asks, like what what did you do to deserve to be in Poland? And my mother is Polish, my father is Polish. I was born here. I mean, yeah, clearly you were you really had a hand in that, you know. Mm. <laughs> Come on, it makes no logical sense. It makes no logical sense um, to me either. Um, so that kind of. Political, well, we don't necessarily nail our political cars to the mast, but here, but uh, we'll just say that we're not nationalist. <laughs> um, maybe uh, somewhat uh, unusual, but yeah, that doesn't surprise me from Facebook. Um, the, that's, I mean, I don't go on it very often because, well, none of, not many people my age bother with it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook is dead. I agree. There, there's nothing. Well, well what, 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 if I wasn't using Twitter, maybe, but. Um uh he's just checking we're not having anyone watching on facebook no we're not broadcasting on facebook we're all good we can say what we want about facebook don't sh don't share this on facebook <laughs> we, uh, we like used it. to right i think there's a problem with facebook right yeah, now fa we're having a problem broadcasting on facebook say so same thing we're having a problem broadcasting on instagram um it might be because we were delayed with the stream because obviously the matches previous took a little bit longer than expected um, to the ones we were expecting to cover today. I mean, like, we're also not expecting to cover um, Andy Murray and David Goffan, but you all seem to be hearing up for that. Um, I think it's yeah. going to be interesting if Murray can uh, can see this one out. Um, Eric Andreva's got break point again to go up 5-3, potentially, on Collins. Daniel, Daniel retired last week, right? So... Danielle, yeah, yeah. The, I I did think that she was in danger because of that injury. Um, but yeah, maybe Erica Andre was finally coming on strong. Mira lost. She probably you know got the info already for someone, and now she thinks, okay, so I need to keep things up for the household. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, I'm just checking what else is happening around the ground. Um, Van Ash is uh, Arnaldi is going to be serving at four five to stay in the second set and avoid tech going to the side of there. Marojan is a set a break up on Rodionov. It's two all in the deciding set between Pera and Saville. Tara Daniel um, and Daniel Galan are in going with serve, and Yulia Putin is a is a uh, break up against Tamara Korpach. Uh, we have had wins today for Angelique Kerber, Brandon Nakashima, Katie Voynets, Tadasi Kokonakis, Camilla Georgi, Marie Bushkova, Chris O'Connell, Shevchenko, uh, Alexandra Shevchenko, Tatiana Maria, Yannick Hanfman, May Hontama, and Rebecca Shramkova. Rebecca Shramkova? 
Yep, she beat Wong Yafon 6 4 6 love. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't even realize she was playing this. I think she was out for like a while or something because I just recently checked her uh, checked her records. Um, I remember she was really good in that uh, Warsaw event, of course, last year, and she beat uh, Muchova. And um, yeah, it was like that crazy. That cr no, she be did she beat Muchova or did she like uh, did Muchova come come up with a crazy comeback against her? I, I, either of the two, but anyway, I remember looking at her results since recently, and they were yeah, she beat Muchova. Uh, oh no, she actually she was actually playing. I don't know. I I just remember looking at her results recently, and I was surprised that she she is here even. Yeah, and she even won a match. Through, came through qualies. Um so can't you yeah, that, that tells you how much wta qualifying i watched <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so she's yeah shrunkover is through beating uh wong Yifan, which is a reasonable win i would say yeah yeah she, she actually has quite a lot of potential but like yeah one of these patchy players we mentioned earlier <laughs> where like it's just so hard for her to deliver it on every single occasion um, I'm kind of shocked she hasn't been in the top 100 ever, but well, maybe if she beats Hadat Maya, maybe she can get there this week. Maybe, maybe she can, uh, yeah, get some, I guess, uh, momentum a bit. Like, obviously, you know, it depends on how, how much of 2024 that she's missed uh, due to this injury, right? No, I mean that 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 was just me mixing it up with someone else, honestly. Oh, okay. <laughs> it turns out, no, it it um, turns out that she wasn't injured. It was just probably that she wasn't doing, you know, uh, that good when I checked it, and probably that was, the, yeah. Yeah. So it Shrunk has won through qualifying. She beat Vic Meyer six love six one, and then beat uh, Ponche um, seven six in a deciding set. Yeah. Um, so one so more win would not get her into the top 100 yet. So she would no. need to win two matches from here. So it's going to be pretty hard to secure it this week. I mean, had a match on a losing streak, but even so. I mean, yeah, especially considering two wins required. That's going to be tough. Who is Who would it be there next? If she beats Hadad Maya, Pavlyuchenkova, Kessler, or Parizas Diaz. Yeah, it's that's, not going to be easy. Tough. No. Basically, the best run of her career if she if she gets there. That's that she makes herself kind of the underdog of the tournament. That that way, if she does succeed in that, it would still be the forefront. Like it would be, it would be you know possible for someone else to mm. overcome Not her. You know, it's by Harry making Dart. the semis. Harriet Dart made fourth round here with either that was either twenty one or twenty two. Oh really? It would be a sort of run, yeah. I remember Bronzetti, but was it Miami or India Falls? I don't, I don't know by now. I think it was Miami. Uh, Bronzetti, as a, as a lucky loser, made it to the forefront. That was pretty wild, too. King, you're asking me, does the Carl Edmund come back interest me? Yes, in the sense that I am sympathetic to Kyle's story as someone who was a really good prospect, reached a Grand Slam semi final fairly early in their career. Um, you know, was kind of definitely top 20 potential. Um, and uh, I, and then sort of has been really unfortunate with injuries. So it would be nice to see him finding some success again. So, yeah, I'm interested in that in that respect, uh, in that that sense. I'm not sure how likely it is because, again, he seems to struggle to, like with Laura Robson, struggle to get some momentum and stay healthy. But let's see how it goes. Um, and by the way, talking to Laura Robson fan because that was really gutted to try and play. Yeah, tough to not be disappointed about the last few events for for Kyle because January he was so good in these British IDFs like Loboro and mm -hmm. and stuff. He wins a couple. He uh, play he plays very physical matches and survives them as well. Then he gets to the challenger level and just does nothing. And um, it's it's been a bit disappointing because especially the Glasgow Nottingham events like these just seemed like real opportunities for him. The quality of the draw was pretty weak. The yeah the opportunities were there, but he loses to Stewart Stewart or Scott. I never know. One is the footballer, one is the tennis player. Anyway, he loses to Parker in the second round. He gets blown out by Droguet, six two six two. 
like yeah just these kind of showings that kind of tell you that okay so he won the cup that the, the couple of itfs but he's still not there at the challenger level and it's uh i was expecting a bit more the last month yeah uh it's it's not it's not looking good for him at the minute um also not looking great for david goffan who tried yeah he's been trying to serve it out but that was struggling with the murray he struggled with the murray return now and that game points a long game at the minute murray trying to grind this out and maybe david goffan's an opponent where this actually works yeah Murray isn't too fast these days but he still anticipates pretty well and goffan so far just can't hit through him at all it, it's been a pretty lousy showing i'm gonna lie i mean could goffan ever hit through murray well not in their matches so far but you know it's 2024 murray it's also 2024 goffan i know but you know the the offensive game has declined less probably than defensive just in general and that's even with these two. Mari is defending a couple of smashes now. He's back in the point. Again, go from the net. He will smash again and he will win the point. It was like the Kokinakis Australian Open one, sort of. Mari just it's throwing up. in these very, very high lobs and uh, Goffin kind of unable to put it away until he finally managed. I mean, his defense, Mari's defense has been on par point today. From just seeing how it's been the set, really. Yeah, Goffin really can't make it through, and um, without that, it's gonna be pretty hard. Was it? Is it more the conditions or him being a little, well, erratic with his attacks today? Both really, but yeah, Mari definitely still reads the game very well and just is able to without any massive speed anymore he's basically able to um get into the right spots anyway and yeah just guess where the opponent will be will be uh playing of course not guess but like you know feel yeah he, he he's one of the best anticipators on tour still yeah uh still absolutely um it's just obviously what he does with it that seems to be that should be game, but Goffin makes this smash. Yeah, he does, but it was like on the line, a little close for comfort, but he gets that game, so keeps himself in it. Yeah, keeps himself a break behind uh, Andy Murray. Um, and Eric Andreva's two points away from taking the first set against Danielle Collins. Um, Van Arnaldi um, is has got break points to break Van Ash uh, currently at five all. Marajan is serving for the match against Rodionov. Um Putin Service secure the first against Korpatch and Vosniak and Zhu are underway. Uh, you are up to take from around the grounds. Um what do you do you think about the backhand slice, Damien? Is the backhand slice a weapon for many players? Feels like it is overused and can put you on the back foot a lot um i mean a weapon for it, it's not meant to be a weapon right it's mostly there to reset the rallies i mean for some it can be a weapon if you're approaching after that if you're maybe yeah just mixing up the rhythm a little more proactively but in general it's not supposed to be uh, a weapon like it's just supposed to keep you in the point and supposed to um allow you to stick around so i guess you know for the most part, if you're slicing, you're going to be losing the point, probably, if you're slicing like from a defensive position. But does that, that, does that mean that you shouldn't be slicing? Well, I don't know. Um, if you're able to hit like a stronger open stance shot, sure. But for the most part, I think that um, the slice is, is not really like overused or underused. Uh, probably we, we still have a lot of that in the modern game and i don't think it would ever really disappear unless everyone is suddenly able to just hit hit their backhands open stance right away from every position but um yeah it doesn't seem like it will disappear and especially of course it depends on the court the effectiveness of it as well if you're slicing on clay it's going to be considerably less um effective and maybe with the emergence of all these slower hard courts that we have right now maybe that's also a thing 
but all in all, I mean, I don't know, Grigor Dimitrov over the, over the last year or so, does his resurgence happen without his slice? I mean, not at all. And uh, players like Djokovic, Sinner, Alcaraz, like they all use it um, to an extent. Uh, of course, it's not the main thing that stands out, but um, yeah, but especially probably Dimitrov right now at the top of the game. You know, Tsitsipas, if he had a slice, like for example, imagine that. Um, so, so there are also players who don't really have it, and then you um, basically it limits their their game as well because they can't return from these, um, yeah, from behind really. So uh, I don't know. To to the question, I would say no, it's not overused. Not overused. There you go. You heard it here first, um, and I would I would completely agree. To be honest, I think. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. It is it is a defensive shot primarily. It's there for um, other reasons. It's not necessarily here for... Um, it, it's not meant to be a weapon, as you say. I think um, uh, if you're too aggressive on the backhand, um, then it's just going to break down when you're on the defence a lot. Look what happens to City Pass. Yeah, and usually one-handers would get better slices as well, but not for Steph. <laughs> for Steph, it hasn't worked. But maybe it's also a thing because his one-hander is like very, mm, I don't know, robotic, unnatural, if you may. Like it's not the most fluid technique, so maybe that also sort of plays a part in it. Do you think he started off as a double-hander and then got told to play single? <laughs> I don't know. Victoria Golubic did, I think, but I don't know about Tsitsipas. Mm -hmm. It would have to be a while ago. I don't, I don't know. You just described it like that. I was like, hmm, that sounds like someone who tried to, who who may have initially learned double and then switched to single. Maybe. Um, it would be a very rare switch, but possible. Very uh, early on, yeah. Go on. No, I just said very early on. Yeah, of course, it happens, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, it's just injuries, <laughs> like Muta. Fair, yeah. I mean, I do remember when I was, what would I been, 18, 19, maybe 20. Um, you know, I uh, I was coached to play double, double-hander, backhand. And then I spent a year without my coach and... Uh, didn't play as often and then decided I wanted to experiment a bit more. Like I felt like a one-hander would be more fun, more uh, versatile. And so I started trying to play with that. And then I went back to him and he saw me trying to play with a one-hander and he was like, what is that? <laughs> and uh, said, well, if you're going to do it, do it right. Coached me how to do a one-hander. And then I went, yeah, fair enough. That double is double works better. <laughs> double, double was but good. I can play with a one hander if I need it, but it, that's usually when I'm on the stretch or I need to hit a mm -hmm. slice. Joe if it's Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 in my arsenal if I ever need it to be. Yeah, I mean, go from the first game you know, from the first point here in that game, so you kind of felt like there might be a bit of a shot, especially as the next point was like pretty crazy, but. Murray still like kind of outmaneuvers him and now just more errors coming off the Belgian's racket. So six three four two. Yeah, Murray really working the court really, really well. I mean, this is the kind of maybe not necessarily as dynamic as we're used to seeing, but this is the kind of game that Murray likes to play. Yeah. Um Okay, do you know what? I'm gonna. I think I haven't seen any of the draw preview shows yet that we've done. Um, I've been at work when they've come out, um, but uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to. So, in case I haven't, so it may well be that you're repeating yourself here, but um, the Dal Raonic tomorrow. How do you see that playing out? Yeah, we're basically operating on like hunches when it comes to Rafa. I did not watch the exhibition. I was not interested in it at all. So Same. probably some people who saw it 
they will have a slightly better idea of what Nadal can bring to the table. I, you know, my gut feeling is that he will win um, and that he will lose to Runa. <laughs> but, but um, well, basically, yeah, we are just operating on hunches. I think what he showed in Brisbane was fine enough. From what I've heard at the exhibition, he was also okay and had some flashes. Of course, maybe the intensity wasn't as high, but I don't know, just what people described to me, it sounded like he was okay and, well, fine physically. I wouldn't really expect a retirement from him, more so from Raonic, who seems to have an issue completing matches recently as well. Both uh, have succeeded in Indian Wells in the past, so there's not much to look at there. Actually, the only win of Raonic uh, over Nadal has come at Indian Wells, so that's pretty interesting. But, um, of course, yeah, that was like, what, 2015 or whatever the year was. Uh, so, like, all in all, I my gut feeling is that he's probably going to be looking pretty okay. And um, that's kind of what I'm operating on. But, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's no info, really, to be had there on both players. I mean, Milos also, his last match being a retirement in, mm. in the Rotterdam, of course. Yeah, I'm with you um, on that. And for similar reasons, like, I, I also would have picked Rafa to win that one. Um, but that was based just as much on the opponent as it was Rafa. Because, again, they're both ageing players with uh, fragile bodies. And right now, Milos is the more fragile It's a funny thing to say about a guy who's only played one event um, over the past year and also had to withdraw from a match there. However, yeah. uh, no, sorry, not withdraw, but like wasted three match points after three and a half hours and then withdraw, withdrew from his next few events. But um, I mean, I'm not saying it's not true, <laughs> but um, well, let's say neither is too. Um, but yeah, I'm not durable at the moment. I'm not giving either of them much chance against Rona. It's like a fun only, match. The only way Definitely. I can see it happening is if Rona self destructs. Yeah, it's a fun match on paper with either player. Rona Nadal is actually, yeah, like it, it sounds like a treat for sure, but it will require a very strong level right away from Rafa to like for it to be uber competitive or maybe for Rune, you know, to be um, just out of it mentally because he's playing one of the best ever, but this hasn't really been happening to him. I mean, even yeah. his first match against Novak, he was so good in the second set. And once again, just like the theme of his career, just wasn't able to keep it up physically. But Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, no, but it really wasn't really mentally, not... you know, it really wasn't really any not... awe. Yeah, Runa is not in awe of the aura of his opponents, Djokovic, Nadal, yeah. whoever. Um, it, yeah, he's, that doesn't phase him. Uh, yeah, although Rune is an interesting place, I think, at the minute. Uh, his, his progress may be a bit slower than a lot of people of us might be hoped, might have hoped. But he's still pretty young. Gonna be a break point for Mare at four two. Breaking news from yeah, Damien a minute in the future. <laughs> yeah, Kofan had a 40 30 point. I honestly am a bit tired and I don't even remember how it got to deuce. But now eh, he tries to go for this angle that Mari kind of opened up for himself. Uh, I mean, for, for for him, misses it. It's just been like, yeah, I think lousy is a perfect word to this perfect word to describe. Goffin's showing today. He just hasn't, you know, hasn't imposed himself, hasn't impressed. And Mare takes this second serve return very early cross court, and he has the double break now. Nice. So it looks like Goffin will have a horrible record in another. Well. Against Alex Deminor, he wasn't able to pull out his first win recently, which, you know, given where Alex Deminor is right now, was perfectly fine. Against Andy Murray, he's also not going to, which, um, given where Andy Murray is right now, is like, yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could try, maybe this, this could be a great opportunity. But, well, 
so far he's not able to take it. Um, apparently, Goff has never won a set against Andy Murray. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, look, I thought Murray would win this match. Um, anyway, uh, I know I haven't been seeing. I mean, obviously, I know Goffan has come through qualies and he's doing, you know, he's on the Challenger tour at the minute, but it's, um, uh, it's, you know, he's, he's def- neither of them are sort of their, their full selves. And even if they were, the result will probably still be much the same. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to call it after this game. Uh, if Murray serves it out, uh, we're going to call it. Uh, gone a little bit longer than planned, but um, you know we figured you guys wanted to see what was happening with Murray, so we're we're, we're doing that. Um, we are currently doing that for you. Um, but obviously, I don't know what the plan is for live streams tomorrow. I know that we hopefully will be. I know there is a. We're hoping to do Nadal versus Raonic. Um, obviously, depends on. Uh, availability from the team, but we'd love to do that match. Um, we're probably going to keep an eye on when they schedule Raducanu and Asaka. I would imagine those are going to be of interest to you guys, hopefully. Um, Kokinaki Skiron. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? But clearly, look, we've, we've got a, a, an audience where you know you guys know your tennis and you know uh, what an interesting match will be. Um, we've actually got match points, all big points all around, because Arnaldi has just secured the match against Van Ash, 7-6, seven, 7-6. Six, seven, six. Um, won the second set tiebreak, 7-3. Um, Collins has got five set points against Eric Andreva for the first set. Um, we've got Darius Saville to about serve for the match against Bernardo Perra. So, yeah, lots of big... Yeah, so... Grounds. Raonic Nadal is the first match of the night session. Yeah. So, I so think it's our, uh, 3 a.m. my time. I think our North American friends would need to cover it. We'll see. I might be able to. Conversation with... Um, uh, conversation to be had with the boss. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but generally... Probably there's going to be something, but you guys will have to wait and see. Can we get a live stream for Kigali? <laughs> um, I don't know if the interest would be there, really. I think it would literally just be you watching Keen. It would have to be members which, only. Which would be fine. Like, you know, I would, I would be fine with that, really. Uh, just sitting there and talking about, like, a challenger thing. But it would be amazing, of course, if we could get, you know, to show the stream, actually. Which... Um, well, is also impossible, just like on, on main tour events, sadly, despite you being actually able to like use the footage afterwards for anything you want. Goffan saved the first match point on my screen. Um... And on mine, he hasn't saved the second one as Andy Murray blasts an ace to get to the second round. 6-3, 6-2, and who is Andy Murray going to play next? Uh, Andy Murray is playing... This is you're testing my knowledge here, Damien. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I forgot. I forgot. So, so have I. That's the problem. Um, I, I I know it's a seed. I've just forgotten which seed. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Yeah. Everyone everyone who wins today plays a seed. Everyone that's, who wins tomorrow what, plays a seed. That's what I'm here for, Damien. It's... Let me find it. Andre Rublev. Rublev, oh, yeah, I knew it was yeah. a big scene. Bye-bye, Andy Murray. Thank you for this event. You won a round, which is good. It's the third mm-hmm. consecutive uh, tournament, in fact, in which Andy Murray wins a round. The previous ones, of course, being Doha and Dubai. So, you know, it is it is still a decent result for uh, the yeah. guy. But, well, About what we I, I don't buy it against Rublev. I, I just don't, can't yeah. see it. No. And I that gives I, me a lot of time to watch Prado and Hello Gokrabelli as well. That already finished right now. So <laughs> let go. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy that, uh, Damien. Right. I think we both need sleep, unless you're planning on staying up and watching more tennis. 
Um, I will stay up for quite a while. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to stay up until the end, like especially as you know, Menchik Hong, for example, is not exactly the most competitive match, I would assume. But I will stay up for a while. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, the tennis to come. And I hope that all of you watching enjoy the tennis we have to come from Indian Wells. It's been a very interesting opening day. Um, some result, noteworthy results, but let's face it, the tournament's really going to kick into gear. Uh, well, definitely the second round, but it's going to start. But we're going, we're, we're looking forward to seeing some big names in action tomorrow. We're hoping to cover it here on Talking Tennis. If you're new here, please give us a subscribe, give us a follow uh, on YouTube, on X, um, and uh, we will be back for more live streams. But thank you all for joining and keep talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.